76,000 here in East Lansing at Spartan Stadium. Number two ranked Miami squaring off against the Spartans of Michigan State. Well, you had a chance to see number one. Now it's going to be number two and make some comparisons between the two. This is a big game, Dick Vermeil, for Dennis Erickson, his first year as coach of the Miami Hurricanes. This is going to be a barometer for him. He said, though, it's a lot easier maybe maintaining excellence and building programs like he has in the past. Well, I really believe that. And if you can win at Washington State, you can maintain the excellence, of, um, excellence in Miami. It, it, I think I would, as a coach, I would rather do that, try to maintain the excellence that they've already achieved. Well, you look at what they've done. They've called themselves the team of the 80s in many ways. And look at this. They've had 12 first-round draft picks in the 80s. That's the reason they keep winning national championships. But let me say something right here, Mr. Vermeil. <laughs> Michigan State is not intimidated today. No, well, they're, they're a blue-collar football team led by George Perlis. They're tough. They teach tough football, not that anybody else does it. But their whole philosophy is tougher, meaner, and stronger, and get after them. And that's what they'll do today. Some of you will be seeing the USC and Washington take game in Pullman. Let's go out now for a report from Steve Alvarez and Mike Attaboy. The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. This is the second ranked team of the nation, the Hurricanes of Miami coming onto the field at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Miami with a 10 game winning streak. They've won 24 of their last 25 on the road, and this is their new head coach, Dennis Erickson, 4-1 in his coaching career against Big Ten teams. First meeting between these two clubs since 1982. Beautiful day, 72 degrees at kickoff time, a sellout crowd of 76,000, and here now are the co-captains coming out for Michigan State. Bob Kula, the offensive tackle. The Spartans losing last week to top-ranked Notre Dame and now squaring off against the number two-ranked team of the country, the Hurricanes of Miami. This is Spartan country. And in the past two years, Michigan State has played very well to splice it in Big Ten play, 13-1-2. Beautiful day for football. The Spartans going against the Hurricanes. George Perlis, five straight winning years for the first time in 25 years at Michigan State. 13-1-2 at Big Ten play, and what a day this is. The leaves starting to change here in the Midwest. We're on the campus of Michigan State University with the Spartans playing host to the Miami Hurricanes. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. In the last six years, Miami's been the winningest college football team of the nation. But in the offseason, they lost Jimmy Johnson and Steve Walsh to the Dallas Cowboys, the National Football League. New coach, new quarterback, but same result as they've won all three and outscored their opposition 120 to 13. Michigan State, on the other hand, has a dubious distinction of playing the number one and two ranked teams back to back. Last week, Notre Dame. This week, of course, it's Miami. With me is Dick Vermeil. And Dick, number one and number two, but two distinctively different teams from week to week they're going to face. Gary, what you say is especially true on offense. Notre Dame is a fine running team with an excellent option quarterback, and they complement that offense with a superior play action passing game. In contrast, Miami is a one back running attack, four wide receivers, and they throw the ball all over the field. And believe me, I don't believe there's a a better passing team in college football than we're going to see here today. This is a very anxious day for Dennis Erickson, the new coach of Miami. A lot of people saying this is a barometer as to what kind of football team he has. Well, Gary, I really believe people sitting in Miami, especially in Miami, are saying, Coach, prove to me you can pass the test of beating a good football team. The teams you've beaten were not winners. Coach is taking over for teams and, and teams that have experienced great success, national championships. The evaluation process is always tougher. I've been in the Pac-10 coaching situation for seven years, and if a coach like Gary Eric, excuse me, can win seven, win nine games there, I tell you, he can win anywhere, Gary. All right, we're going to be back. The issue at stake, the Big Ten against the Independent from the South. 
We'll be back with the opening kickoff here from Spartan Stadium in just a moment. Let's introduce you to another member of our broadcast team. Let's go sideline and here's Cheryl Miller. Thanks very much Gary. This should be a very big game for both teams but a game that will not be played by two players two key players in this game starting with Miami Bernard Clark is out with a sprained knee that he suffered at the hands of Missouri last week. His teammates defensively will miss his leadership and his charisma. As for Michigan State well they're going to miss the rushing and all out toughness of Blake Ezor. He separated his shoulder against Notre Dame last week as well. So we're going to have to wait and see what kind of adjustments that each team has to make without these players. Players. Let's go back to you, Gary. All right, Cheryl. Michigan State won the toss, deferred to the second half, so the Spartans will kick off. You see back deep Alex Johnson along with Randall Hill. John Langlow will be kicking off for Michigan State. And we're underway. It's Alex Johnson going deep, but there'll be no return on this one. And at the 20-yard line, the Hurricanes will set it up as you look at Craig Erickson. Out of the West Palm Beach area. Erickson with eight touchdown tosses, five interceptions. And a look at his supporting cast. Carroll, Conley, Dawkins, and Hill. Outstanding wide receivers. They go to the one back set a lot. Chudzinski back after a couple of uh, games out with an injury. Sullivan, Holder, Garcia, Handy, and Searcy. All but one of those offensive linemen are starters from a year ago. From the 20-yard line now, Miami with a first snap. Erickson to throw on first down. Incomplete intended for Dawkins at the 40. Harlan Barnett was closest to the football, and let's set now defensively the Spartans of Michigan State. Excellent. They have been on defense ever since George Perlis took over. Vanderbeek, Leidinger, Davis, and Willards. Davis is an All-American candidate. All three linebackers returned from a year ago, and you'll want to watch 48, Percy Smo. And then Haller, Iconello, Bartnett, and Donaldson, two of four returning starters from a year ago. Second down, 10 from the 20. Conley goes in motion. Erickson quick looking pass complete to Chudzinski, the tight end to the 27-yard line. Jenkins hitting instantaneously, and it'll bring up the third down and still three yards to go. That's what Coach Perlis was telling us. He's, they're going to catch those short passes, but we're going to make them pay the price when they catch it. Erickson has on a couple of occasions started very slowly for Miami against Wisconsin. He had only one of his first nine passes, had four interceptions in a game against California. Third down and a long three. The protection is there, and he's on target. Wesley Carroll's got a first down. He goes out at the 40, out to the 41-yard line. 14-yard gain, and Harlan Barnett was over there, but there is a penalty flag. You can see they come to throw the football, Gary, and they throw it all over the field. They stretch your defense from one sideline to the other. As you take a nice look at this end zone shot, you see it's a straight five-step drop pass. He's going to throw it to left. One, two, three, four, five. Pretty technique. Turn and throw it over there. High percentage throw. One-on-one -on -one single coverage. And they don't like to play that man-to-man -man coverage, but when you get in third and short, you've got to play him tight. Well, tack on another 15 yards to the game. It's a late hit on the far side, and so that moves the ball to the 44. We have a split crew working today's game. For the Big Ten is Jim Kimmerling. They have the Southern Independents represented. Does the split crew mean they both get to make mistakes? <laughs> You're very suspicious. So the gain of 14 yards and a 15-yard penalty sets it up at the 44 of Michigan State. That's behind the intended receiver. Intercepted. And intercepted, Percy Snow. Percy Snow is your middle linebacker sitting right here. The tight end, Chudzinski, is going to come off to the inside. He's going to drop in zone and pick it off. Straight drop back pass. They run a man in motion. Now, see, he's looking right over the middle, and there's Percy. Here he is. Now, he works back in on the ball. The ball is actually thrown behind him, and that's why it was intercepted. Percy Snow, the leading tackler in the Big Ten, an All-American candidate, coming up with his first interception of the year. At the 35, State has it. No score, just underway. Steve Montgomery goes in motion. 
And penalty flags everywhere, stopping the play. Again, Michigan State without their starting tailback, Blake Ezor. Let's set that offensive picture. Illegal procedure against Michigan State. Five-yard penalty. As we mentioned, Ezor is out of the lineup. Highland Hickson, who's out of the Fort Lauderdale area, will start in his stead. Enos, the quarterback this year. Montgomery, Hawkins, and Bradley, who caught a touchdown pass last week. Young, Kula, Moten, an outstanding lineman out of Cleveland. Pearson, a former Notre Dame player. Keller and Johnson up front. First and 15. So it's first and 15 From now Michigan for State. Michigan State back at the 30-yard line. And see, a running type football team like Michigan State is, they don't like these first and 15s. Nobody does, but if you're throwing the ball, you think, hey, you can get that in a couple downs, but running it, it's a lot tougher. Well, Look at George. <laughs> yeah, George. George says, who, me? We didn't do anything like that. But they want to pound Miami a little bit. They want to be able to run the football, but you can't do that if you're going to keep going on first and 15 and get into those kind of holes. Well, they did do what they wanted to do initially is they wanted to create the turnover. They did that. Interception now. Jim Kimmerling is uh, still sorting something out on the near side of the field. The one thing we know, they're not going to instant replay. That's right. <laughs> George Perlis in his seventh year, five straight winning years. I don't know if they're having trouble with the clock or what the what the situation is. We'll try to figure it out as soon as possible. And anyway, George Perlis, 10 years an assistant coach with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Series record, he's never faced Miami, and uh, that's Charlie Baggett alongside him on the right. He'll be wigwagging the plays in. We understand they took two seconds off the clock. They want to get those two seconds back. I think the official's calling you, Gary. Say hello. <laughs> Say hello. Hey. I will if it's not collect. Well, Percy Snow, coming up with that interception, had some thoughts about this game. He was, uh, I think, making some emphatic statements all week long. He felt they could play against this uh, number two ranked team in the country. And he doesn't talk much. No, he doesn't. You know, he's not a talker. But he came out and made some action speak for themselves <laughs> as he came up with the interception. So I guess we got the two seconds back now. Well, they're still re-correcting the clock. Now they're running the clock down. And uh, those two seconds, you never know, Dick, could be of major importance. So talking about Percy Snow, we ask him, what did you say to Miami when you lined up against him? Here was his reaction. Nothing. Talk is cheap. Let's play ball. I won't say very much. I won't say very much on the field. I just play my game. I let them do the talking. Hey, you think he's serious? Oh, that was a game face. Yeah. He's going to be a number one face. Yeah. He's going to be a number one draft choice. Maryland seven. Last, Add to that list. Last week Ohio against State, Notre Dame, he had a career high 19 tackles. And probably many remember in that Rose Bowl game, he was the MVP. They beat USC two years ago, two New Year's Final days ago. Well, Dan Enos, who replaces Bobby McAllister, who took Michigan State to the Rose Bowl, will come on. They really like how he studies the game. He's a real student of the game, working very hard to make his opportunity pay off. After every evening training table dinner, he goes over, collects some tape and film, and starts studying again. Good student. So the clock has been reset at 14.09. We're all ready to roll. On the first and 15, play action. No, they hand off straight ahead. And no place to go that time. Russell Maryland made sure of that as Highland Hickson is gobbled up. Highland. You're going to love to watch Russell Maryland, number 67. He is so, so quick. And he's joined by Pegues, Kennedy, and Mark, the All-American candidate up front. And then they have a change of middle linebacker, Michael Barrow, starting in place of Bernard Clark, as Cheryl pointed that out at the start of the broadcast. And in that secondary, both of their corners have picked off three. He knows giving off again to Hickson, and Hickson to the 31-yard line. And so they got a long ways to go on third down. Cortez Kennedy over there to make the stop for the Miami Hurricanes. The entire defensive line for Miami can really move. I mean, they can ricochet off blocks. They take on your blocker, and down the line of scrimmage, they come. From up here, you'll see an offensive hole open, Gary, and it'll close right now because they can move so quick. I mentioned the interceptions. Barry and Smith have three each. Third down, 15 almost to go. Handoff straight ahead to Hickson across the 40, and he's going to be about a yard short of the first down at the 45. 
Bobby Harden and Charles Farms, the two safeties coming up to make the stop for Miami. But Michigan State will have to punt the football. Hickson's a very good daylight runner. They miss Ezor's toughness, but Hickson has the ability to bust the big one for you. Josh Butlin, 88, goes back to punt. He's the sophomore out of Troy, Michigan. And Wesley Carroll, the junior college transfer, who has just been sensational in the early going for the Hurricanes, goes back to receive it. 17 and a half yard average returning punts. That's better than the first time, a first down every time he touches it back there. The average over 20 yards return against Wisconsin. Very poor punt off the side of the foot, but it does take a state bounce to the 20. And Carroll will get it to the 28 yard line before he's knocked out of bounds there. So Miami will have the football for the second time. That will go as a 36 yard punt, a nine yard return. Well, we're getting settled in here, and there's no score, 12-10, first quarter. Roger, thank you very much. Wow, Duke kind of short-circuited that Clemson march to New Year's Day, didn't they? they? Were, we were counting on them in the Citrus Bowl, weren't we? Oh, Not a, hey, nothing's automatic. That's right. The first time that Miami had the football, they attempted passes on every occasion, we'll see what they do this time. No back attack. <laughs> back to throw is Erickson, and a oh. catch in the open air is made. That catch is made by Lamar Thomas. He's a freshman out of Gainesville. That's his fifth catch of the year, and that was the first down to the 42. Thomas came in on a slant pattern. He's the left-hand side of your screen. He comes off the ball about nice depth. Now he breaks the inside right in that zone. He gets the ball tucked away nicely. And Donaldson comes and makes the tackle, but he hangs on to it. 13-yard gain. They use six different oh. wideouts. And now we have a stoppage, yeah. It's it amazing moved. how many wide receivers they use, and everybody's happy. They're all getting to play. They all play. If you're going to throw the ball 45, 50 times a game, you're going to get to catch some balls, and you're going to need to play some receivers. Good ball. That, that was Shadzinski, the big tight end, number 84, who played his first game last week. He had been injured. He'd had a, a muscle strain problem, a calf muscle strain, and here he is, a 3.6 grade point student, making a mistake. Too smart to make that mistake. Well, he doesn't make them in the classroom. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he had a big game last week. Had eight catches for 101 yards. Do you think they'll run today? <laughs> I'll bet they will. First and 15 now for the Hurricanes. No score, 11.47 to go in the first quarter. They're coming after him. Erickson's in trouble. Coming through first was Carlos Jenkins, 51, and he is a Floridian out of Boynton Beach. And the sack will have a loss clear back to the 32-yard line. There's Jenkins. He was heavily recruited by Miami. His mother is here at the game today, and he was very impressed with Charlie Baggett, one of the assistant coaches. There is a penalty flag, however, inside the 30. You'll note that there is no running back. He has gone in motion. Michigan State game plan is to part of the time when no back here, they're going to come after him. That's what they did. They got to him successfully this time. Of course, Miami will adjust. Here comes Carlos Jenkins, number 51, gets him. Good pile up. Well, what had happened on the penalty, Dick, is they had offsetting penalties, personal fouls on both teams. So the play stands as is. Back to the 32. Let's see. The 32 yard line is where they're going to uh, set it up. And it's going to be second and 20. Second and 20. Erickson that time, even though he had three guys split to the near side, could not find anybody open. Second and 20. Comes out throwing. The completion is made by Randall Hill. He's their fastest oh. wide receiver. He's nailed by Chris Willards. Doubling back on the play. Still going to be short of the first down. The line of scrimmage, the 47-yard line. Here is Hill in your screen. He's going to clean it out. He's going to run a turn-in pattern. Now he's looking back inside to find the hole. Now he moves right in that zone. See that big zone? A lot of room around him. They're going to have to crowd him a little more from time to time in this ballgame. They don't want to get up on him tight, Gary, because he can fly. He's the fastest receiver on the team. 52-yard touchdown catch last week. 15-yard game. Outside, complete. It's Conley, the fullback. And Conley is going to get enough for the first down. Coming close to the 46-yard line of Michigan State, Bill Johnson is over there. So on a third and five, a little screen for the first down. Take a look at the big offensive lineman now as they come out in the screen. 
Great drop back, set up the screen, the lineman released. Now they have the blockers out. Now watch the back, he comes back underneath the blocks. Good job of running, and good job of using that screen wall. Tom Lee only weighs 170 pounds, but he bounces around. On a first down, Erickson. Going deep to Hill. And he can't get to it. Coverage on the far side by Benson Donaldson. That's the game you saw earlier here on ABC. Notre Dame defeating Purdue. Nebraska leading Oregon State. Tennessee, that's down in Knoxville. Boy, yeah, they're going crazy. It was raining. The Tennessee start of the earlier day. beat uh, UCLA. They've got to be a good football team. Yeah, later, Colorado going against Washington. Michigan beating up on Maryland. And there's the shock of the day right now. Duke over Clemson. Second and ten. Chodzinski overthrown. He was open, the tight end. And again, Dick, I mentioned this earlier. Erickson has been a slow starter. It seems as though it takes him a while to really get everything rolling. Well, just remember this. You know, he didn't play a lot of football last year. He only threw the ball 49 times last year. And each game he comes in, he's gaining experience, figuring out what the defense is doing. The coaches are making adjustments, looking at coverages, and he assimilates that information, and pretty quick he's completing passes. That time, I think fundamentally, he just didn't follow through in his pass, and he threw it over the top. Third and ten thus far Miami has converted on two third downs. Conley goes in motion to the far side of the field. Erickson looks that way. He's going to him. Conley's got it and Conley's got the first down. Boy, quick they feet. Is he quick to the 36 yard line first down? Do they ever stretch you out all the way across the field? You can see what I'm talking about stretching the the field from one side. Here's the receiver. Here's the receiver. Here's the receiver. A lot of area for that defense to cover, especially in the zones. Now you'll see Conley up on top. He's just taking the layoff, pops it. Now there's room. He gets up there. He's a fine running back. He can make people miss when he gets to carry the ball. So they convert on another third down, and they have another first down. This time, short of the 35. Conley. Conley moves to the 31. Check that. Alex Johnson who checked into the football game. Yeah, they played three or four running backs, too. When you only have one running back in a new offense, you know, you're coming into Miami, they've been a two-back attack. The running backs were concerned, hey, only one guy, you know, we won't get to play. No, sir. Dennis Erickson, they just rotate those guys in. Well, it's an exciting offense, and they're using a lot of people to make it work for them. Very sophisticated attack. Second down and six. Three wideouts on this play. Conley has come back Audible. with the running back. Now jumps into the wing. Checked off. Erickson looking to the near side. The pass and to Peter Smith. Can't hang on, and he had trouble coming. Donaldson, the cornerback, coming up on the fly. Might have intimidated him a little bit. I think he heard him coming. Here's Pee Wee right here, number 18. He comes off. It's just a little quick move now. See, he looks outside. Now he, he hears him coming. Ooh, he sees it. He can hear those footsteps. Wham, 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 wham. He gives it to him. Pee Wee's real name is Demetrius Devon. Maybe I'd be called Pee Wee too, huh? <laughs> Third down and six now for the Hurricane. I've been called worse than Pee Wee. <laughs> Conley goes in motion. So it doesn't leave a running back. They're going to come after Erickson. They've got the blitz coming. The blitz coming from Jenkins. He gets it off to Wesley Carroll. And he goes out of bounds at the 24, a couple of yards short of the first down. You see how quickly Erickson, the quarterback, has adjusted to the blitz with the man in motion. No backs in the backfield this time. He reads it, pops it off quickly. He knows he's in trouble. Offside, however, against Michigan State. Dick, one thing that George Perlis told us, he didn't want to have to blitz. He'd like to put enough pressure on without blitzing. The whole game plan is to try to get the heat with the four down linemen and rotate the linemen if they get tired because that's maybe one of the most physical things to do is rush the passer. And he wanted to get the heat with the four guys. He says, if I commit linebackers and everything in the Red Dog, I have to play man to man, and then I'm playing right into their game because they do it so well. Well, he has a lot of depth at defensive line as uh, he could go with two different units, which should help through the course of the day. By the way, you saw that Baltimore-Toronto score a while ago. A reminder, ABC will have that game tomorrow if Baltimore wins. So we'll keep you posted. A lot going on this weekend in football as well as baseball. The first down now being marked at the 24-yard line. Erickson, straight drop back. On target, it's Carroll again, and Carroll wrapped down. Coming up as Barnett drops in at the 18-yard line. Now, Gary, 
the Michigan State coaches feel that Miami will probably move the ball pretty good in between the 20s. But when they get them down inside the 20, they feel that's when they can now tighten up because they don't have as much field to cover and get after them a little more physically. That is the receivers. Get after them. There's the score in the fourth inning. What a dramatic win by Toronto last night in the Sky Dome. Well, this is what they call the critical area. Inside the 20, we're talking about. And they attack it this time with Alex Johnson. Johnson to the 15-yard line. He'll be a little more than a yard short of that first down. That Matt Vanderbeek that did a real nice job of playing defensive end that time, number 66. Did a real good job. As Vanderbeek had a career high in tackles last week against Notre Dame. A brilliant student. I'll tell you, that defensive four wall, they've got a lot of pride talking to them this week. When they stand on the sideline, they stand in the same order position wise they're on the field. They, they just get used to standing that way. Third down. A long one, almost two yards. Audible. Look at this. Erickson audibles into this, and he makes the connection. Pee Wee Smith, the intended receiver, and so it's fourth down. And they'll come in with an outstanding place kicker in Carlos Huerta out of Miami, who's hit five of seven this year. Huerta, before it's all over, he is just a sophomore. This is Kalal, who will be holding number 19. But Huerta, before it's all over, could become the all-time leading field goal kicker for the Hurricanes. He's 8 for 10 in his career from this distance. Very accurate young field goal kicker. And the distance will be 32 yards. The punter allowed to hold. The snap is down. The kick is up. And Miami's on the scoreboard. So the Hurricanes take the lead 3 to nothing with 7 minutes, 56 seconds to go in this first quarter. Michigan State playing another giant, this time number two ranked Miami. Three to nothing, Miami on top of Michigan State after that 32 yard field goal. George Perlis, coach who 13 1 and 2 in Big Ten play. And a coach who two years ago won the State Big Ten Championship and beat Brown. USC in the Rose Bowl. Where to kicking off. Very short. They have some confusion. The short man is Montgomery picking it up. Steve Montgomery. And he's up to the 26-yard line. And that's where Michigan State will start it. Montgomery, the starting fullback, the up man, eventually tackled by Charles Farms. And so State trailing three to nothing will have the football. Montgomery's brother Greg, a punter for the Houston Oilers, who's hurt and may not punt tomorrow. From the 26 yard line, receiver split wide left and wide right. Courtney Hawkins to the near side, James Bradley to the top. Enos to Highland Hickson. And Hickson for two, and then he beats an avalanche led by Russell Maryland. Remember Russell Maryland? He weighed 300 pounds. He's number 67 for Miami when he was in high school out of the Chicago area. No one recruited him except Indiana State, but they liked his great heart and determination. And he comes off the ball, doesn't he? Plus, he weighed over 300 pounds as a senior in high school, and believe it or not, at that weight, they used to have what they call the big man 60 yard dash in that area and he would win it every time and I, I think that's what impressed the Miami coaching staff. Gain of one second and nine. He knows. Go back. Far side Hickson. Hickson doing a good job in the open field up to the 34 three yards short of the first down. Michael Barrow made the stop. Let's go to New York now and let's go to Roger Twible. Well, Roger, that's some of the influence that Dennis Erickson left with him. Of course, coaching at Washington State before coming to Miami. He's impressed the entire Northwest with that football, wide open football. On a third and two, and Hickson is not going to get the first down. That was Hurley Brown coming up to make the stop on Highland Hickson. 
Gary, they're going to the game plan, putting in five down linemen, taking out an extra defense, taking out the defensive back to counter the strong running. Five guys, a little tougher to block that point of attack with five linemen up there. Remember now this year, thus far coming into this game, teams have been running it this Miami team with no effect whatsoever. 0.8 yards per carry. And they still feel they have to change up and go to five down linemen to counter the offensive line strength of Michigan State. He's going to run it. Yep, bad snap, and Butlin's taken off, and he's going to get the first down. Josh Butlin takes it all the way to the 35. That was not designed to be that way, but Butlin, who can play tight end and is quite an athlete in his own right, averted disaster and with 31 yards. A major break for Michigan State. Evidently, now you'll notice as the ball is snapped, it's on the ground. Now you see the return was going to be the left. They crushed the ball into that side and didn't have somebody coming from that side to contain. <laughs> That's a great throw for a punter. You know what's interesting about that? That's the longest run for the line of scrimmage this year for Michigan State. You got to get it any way you can get it. That's right. Well, you know, the guy that snaps the ball is Mark Shapiro. Now, he had a bad snap in the first game. First field goal attempt. That's right. And uh, had a little trouble with that one. Well, first down at the 35 minutes in trouble. And coming through quickly was Richard Newbell, a senior, who is a junior college transfer from Bakersfield, California. They go all over, all over to get their football players. Bakersfield, California to Miami. So the loss back out to the 43-yard line. Well, Butlin is one of those guys who's an athlete. He's 6'5", 230, and really lifts weights effectively. So he was one of those guys, I guess, a situation like that you'd have one with a football. Have you ever heard of a punter that bench presses 405 pounds? No. It's going to squeeze the air out of that ball or what? He's got to be the strongest punter in captivity. <laughs> Second and 18. Second down 18 now for Michigan State. They go three to nothing. Trying to keep the on that by Butler. Here's Enos on the option and cuts it inside the 40. It's a good thing he didn't pitch that out because the running back, Highland Hickson, started to go the wrong way. And if he'd have pitched it out, there wouldn't have been any running back there, Gary. <laughs> At least that's how I saw it. Michael Barrow is over there to make the stop. Now Baltimore leading 3-1. If the Orioles hang on, then Sunday you will see the game here on ABC. Okay, those Orioles have just continued on. Yeah, that'd be 3 o'clock Eastern at the start of that game. You really follow that stuff. Yeah, I do. Third down now, 14 yards to go. He knows back again. And it's Intercept. intercepted. No, nope. nope, almost. Almost oh. picked off. Off the hands of Barrow. And also, that's Maurice Crum, number 49. Now, Crum had an interception last week for a 30-yard touchdown against Missouri. Well, he's had three pass interceptions in his career. He was a second-string All-American last year and definitely an All-American candidate of this year. He can really move this guy. Can. 470, he's a little bit undersized in terms of height at six foot even for an outside linebacker. But boy, I'll tell you, he can flash. That front seven can run. Oh, quicker than you. And now we have a timeout by Miami. Wesley Carroll saw something in that uh, punt return unit he didn't like. So Dennis Erickson's crew will get that straightened out. We'll be back three to nothing in favor of the second ranked team. What a setting it is here. Temperature kickoff time 72 degrees. The leaves starting to change. This is a magnificent setting for cottage football. 76,000. As now Butler will go back and I assume he's going to punt the football. And I guarantee there'll be a containment on each side of the punt return. Carroll back at the 10 waiting. I'm going to try to keep it in the field of play. Angles this one for the corner. Too far, and it'll be a touchback, and Miami will bring it out and start from the 20 yard line. Penalty down. Yep. Another penalty flag. This one back at the 36 yard line. Holding against Miami. Now it was fourth and 14 before that punt. Talking Erickson. about it out there, and Dennis has taken a look. Really enjoyed meeting Dennis Erickson and visiting him because, you know, I was a native West Coast guy, and I've heard a lot about the guy, but never had the opportunity to meet him. And he's really influenced football. Yep. And especially in the Northeast. Well, you just holding. 
on the defense, fourth down. Well, now it makes it fourth down. Is it field goal range? Well, they're four yards away, fourth down four. They're thinking about it. Langlow would be the field goal kicker. It'll be fourth and four from the 28. They're going to attempt the field goal. Langlow is coming out. It's going to be 46 yards long. I don't think you have a choice. I think you have to go out near the, the field goal at this time in a ball game. You know, sometimes you can say, well, geez, we know that Miami's going to score. We're down this close. We've got a game. We'll try to get to the first down and go on and score. But Langlow's been successful from the distance. Last year, he was three for five from this distance. 51 yarder, but again without the tee. And Langlow kicking this one, and he's tied it up. So the penalty by Miami gives State a second crack. Mm -hmm. And they capitalize. 3-3 three, three the score. Three minutes, 59 seconds left in this first quarter. Langlow with the field goal. Shapiro, Holder, Butler. 46-yard field goal, kick by number. Roger, thank you. We're all even here at three. This man, Langlow, with the 45-yard field goal. You see the distance, and of course, the big penalty holding against Miami gave him the field goal opportunity. That's a good kick. There's a lot of height. Johnson down. He put his knee down. Sure did. I think he was having a little trouble locating the ball in the sky and then stumbled. And Miami will start from the four-yard line. You'll see that Alex Johnson, number 21, right here, as he goes forward to catch the ball, he drops down on the right knee. He's down. See, yep. this is not the NFL, young man. Well, I think he was really having a tough time yes. looking up into the sky. Very bright at this particular time of the day. They're going to mark the ball just outside the three. Three to three, our score. 3.57 left in the first quarter. Conley, the fullback. No place to go. Travis Davis was there first. There he is, Davis, second team, all Big Ten pick a year ago. Conley, 28, Conley, Terry. Willards, Davis, one of those veteran people up front. They have four seniors in that starting defensive line. Travis, Davis. And they are a physical group. Well, I tell you, they can all bench press the 400-pound-plus categories. And, I mean, they, get, they really pride themselves in being able to stuff blockers. But the offensive line from Miami, they can block the run. They've run the ball for 147, 144.7 yards a game. So they can move it on the ground. Second down, virtually 10 yards to go. Audible. Erickson, far side, Lamar Thomas. Thomas has a first down as he backs up to the 15-yard line. Benson Donaldson, so they get out of a big, big jam. So Lamar Thomas, Donaldson on the tackle. Here he is up there, the left-hand side of your screen. He just runs a little hitch pattern, turning in, looking for the football. A lot of cushion, a lot of cushion. That's Michigan State's philosophy. We won't see them up there playing tight coverage very often in the ballgame. They just don't want to give up the bomb. Donaldson playing very soft as an end result. First down at the 15. Erickson deep drop. Bean chase, flag on the play, gets it to Conley. And Conley is gobbled up at the 19-yard line. Percy Snow eventually there, but the guy that was really coming on his backside was Tim Reidinger, who made Erickson get rid of the football. They had good heat. They were trying to get the screen off. The penalty is against Miami. All right, 79, your offensive right tackle. Right here is the guy they call for holding. Now, that's Mike Sullivan. See the screen? He's supposed to let him go into the screen, but evidently they saw his right arm wrapped around him. The referee called it, not the umpire. Holding Miami. Miami. Mike, Mike Sullivan. Sullivan's 27 straight Penalty. starts prior to today out of the Chicago area. And a bright young man, 3.8 grade point average, National Honor Society member in high school. You know what he wants to do? He wants to go back to oh, Chicago yeah. and be in politics. That's a good city to be in politics. There's no it? politics in Chicago. No? No politicians, you <laughs> mean. <laughs> First down now, 17 after the penalty. There 
Hicks and not out of the jam yet, and you can see changing the play. Quick hitch, quick hitch. No, out. And too tall on the oh, side for Dawkins. That's a and there's going to be a personal foul. A hit late from Benson Donaldson, number 25. Well, he might have called that was not a catchable football, and he hit him anyway. Benton Donaldson is a little upset. It's an out pattern, number 11. See him right there. Dale Dawkins. Now he goes up for it. Now you see Benton Donaldson. He's down. He came up underneath him. Yeah, they're going to call that every time. And it should be called. You look at Donaldson. He's being tested early and a little uh, shaky over there. Well, we have a dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. First down. It's one thing to be intense, Gary, but it's more important to be intense and control it so it helps you win the football game. Don't allow it to work against you. He wants him to be tougher, and he wants him to be meaner, and he wants him to be stronger, but he also wants him to be smarter. They add that to the court next week. Yeah. So the penalty gives the Hurricanes a first down to the 22. 3-3 three, three the score, two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. They're going to run the football, you watch. One of these days they're going to run it. Well, here it comes. This is Conley. And Conley just across the 25-yard line. Conley carried. That's Reidinger, the man we mentioned earlier, out of Ferndale, Michigan. By Tim he was the offensive player of the game in the first game against Miami. The interesting thing about Michigan State, they played two Miami teams in the first three weeks of the season as they beat Miami of Ohio in the first game of the year, 49 to nothing. Second down and seven. They have a trips formation to the top of the field, three wide out. Erickson scrambling. Throws. Oh, no, Percy at the 31. Big hit by Percy Snow is laid on as Conley was the receiver and he paid for it. Travis Davis, number 75 of Michigan State, was the big defensive lineman that got in there and created the pressure, forced him to get out of the pocket. And Travis is a good pass rusher, did a good job. Has 19 sacks in his career already. Iowa, that is the next opponent of Michigan State. Tulsa. Tulsa beat Oklahoma State earlier this year. Third down now, still two yards to go. We've got two tight ends in that. No, one tight end and a wing back in close. And the trips formation of the top. The action by Erickson being chased by Bobby Wilson. Big block up and almost intercepted. Donaldson had a crack at the interception. Again, Erickson throwing the ball too high for his tight end. That's the second time that's happened. I noticed. Focus your attention on the big tight end as he works back across the linebackers following the play action to freeze him. See, they're freeze him in there with all that action. Here he is coming across the field up. He'll reappear right now to the right corner of your screen. There he is. It goes ways up. He bats it up in the air. Boy, that's dangerous when you bat it up in the air. Tim Kalau will punt the football for Miami. Mike Hazer to snap. Courtney Hawkins back for Michigan State. Ooh, great punt. Very high. Fair catch by Hawkins is being made. And then he lets it hit. And uh, Miami will take advantage of that as the ball will roll close to the 25-yard line. That was a great punt. He got that ball up in the air. And that allows your coverage to, to get under there and cover that kind of punt. 44-yard punt. It looks like they're looking at the hand of Craig Erickson. They're lowering the sights on it. That's what they're doing. I guess they're just so. lowering the sights. <laughs> well, Dick, I know you're looking forward to this. I am too. ABC's Monday Night Football, two bitter coaching rivals going head to head. Mike Ditka, Buddy Ryan, the Eagles against the Bears. The last time they played, they played in the fog. And there'll be uh, there'll be some hitting in that game. <laughs> they're going to get after that. First down state. Yeah, the it's such an equalizer. I mean, you can win, you give up 30 points, you can still beat somebody. Else. Never out of it, are you? Eagles pitches to Ivan Hickson. Line by Roosevelt, Maryland, who came flying over and hit him around the Russell shoulder Maryland pads, and that was as far as that was going to go. They were in two tight ends that time, trying to balance up that defense. See the time remaining as we wind down the final seconds of the first quarter. Second, second down two now for Michigan State. 
Here it is. It's right up there. He got outside the, with a good tight end block on that. Second down to Enos. The Hickson. Hickson's in trouble. He just met at the line. That was Darren Smith. Freshman out of Miami was there. And they're still looking over the hand of Erickson. You know, sometimes in throwing, you, you'll follow through and your hand will hit the helmet of, of a pass rusher or offensive lineman. We've ended the first quarter. It's all even at three. Miami, Michigan State. Some concern in the Miami bench area. Dennis Erickson, we understand, hit his hand on one of the Michigan State helmets. And they have put ice. They have an ice bag on it. This is the backup quarterback. That is Gino Toretta out of uh, Pinole, California. So we'll try to upgrade that situation as soon as possible. Update it. Oh. We come back in now to the start of the second quarter on a third and two. Nothing developed on that play. Absolutely stuffed was the Michigan State running game. Let's go to Cheryl Miller and see if we can get uh, some insight on the injury. Okay, Gary, I'm down here, and right now there's a barrage of trainers around Erickson. They're wrapping his hand. It's his knuckle. It looks like a huge, I mean, very big bump on his knuckle. He's moving it around. They're still taping it, but the trainers think that he's going to be able to go ahead and get back in the game. Thank you, Cheryl. As yep. to punt again will be Butlin, as it's still fourth and two. That last play just didn't do anything for Michigan State. He hits Murphy. Wow! Wesley Carroll goes back for the Hurricane to the 21. Trying to get to the picket line. Oh, look at the speed. 35, 40, and the junior college transfer shows why he's so exciting and averaged over 20 yards return in a game earlier this year. Josh Butlin, who punted, came over and knocked him out of bounds. They'll return, and Miami will have the football. And now we have a flag on the play, and you can see Perlis is upset. And it's a personal foul against Michigan State. So Carroll returned that ball 22 yards after a 45-yard punt. I didn't see any kind of a personal foul play. Did you, Gary? I don't even see the flag. Where is it? I, don't, I didn't see it. I still don't see the flag. But must, must have been down on the sideline here somewhere then. I have a personal foul on the green. First down. Wow. That, that's dumb football. Yep. Tack that's on to that 22-yard return, another 15 yards, and all of a sudden Miami is at the 42 of Michigan State, and Perlis is hot. Oh, I know. And I would do. Yeah, that's dumb football. You can't give a team like that 15 yards in those situations. That's, they move the ball too well on their own. They already had a personal foul earlier. So now we're going to take a break. Still 3-3, and Perlis of Michigan State. Very costly penalty. Back here, Craig Erickson has returned to the huddle on tape a moment ago. We take a look at his hand. You can see he's wrapped it. He had ice on it earlier. Be interesting to see how that will affect him. And you see him moving that finger. That's the really that's the release finger, uh, finger that gives you the touch on the ball. Here's that counter play. The counter goes to Conley. Conley gets a yard, and that's all. And Percy Snow is there. And Snow, in the early going, has really acquitted himself well. Travis Davis also there on the stop. There's the first quarter stats thus far. Michigan State, one first down. That shows the strength of the Miami's defense, and they've been playing like that in the three previous games. Well, the interesting thing about the penalties, yeah. three personal fouls against Michigan yeah. State. Yeah. That's not smart football. At the 41 yard line, second and nine. He got a lot of time. He tried to hit Chudzinski. He and Chudzinski are not on the same page. That's three times he's overthrown his tight end. He's getting a lot of time. Now Davis ran a stunt, number 75, right here, came all the way around on a stunt as these two people came around, but he still didn't get to him. He still had too much time to throw the football. See, he comes all the way around on that stunt. He's sitting there like that. Now he just moves up in there, throws it up over the top. The rush was a little bit close to him right there at the end, and he had to raise his sights. And that's why I was showing how third and nine. And this one, man, mix up here. Randall Hill made a cut at the 25, and the ball was thrown away from him. So a mix up on that play. 
And so Erickson coming in with that damaged hand really didn't get anything going, and they're going to have to punt the football. Dennis Erickson's got to be a little concerned about whether that hand is affected more than uh, Dennis Erickson hopes it is. Well, the other thing is in the kind of offense that they run, they don't rely that much on the running game with that one back there all the time and four wide receivers. They might gradually have to change your approach and come with two tight ends, two wide receivers, and hand the ball off a little bit more and take some heat off the quarterback. So now, hunting, big rush put on, hits it very high, trying to keep it in the field of play, and he's going to Texas. Yes, he did. It's coming back up. Michigan State bounce, and eventually Steve McGuire downs the ball to 15. The injury to... Craig Erickson is the knuckle on his right ring finger. So that's the area that's affecting him, and we'll develop that a little bit later. Well, the uh, concern is starting to mount for Miami. They have their backup quarterback, Gino Toretta, throwing, and uh, I have a correction to make. It's his ring finger, the index is not the finger I thought it was earlier. It's a ring finger knuckle. And there's a tape again of it. You can see, as you said, that's one that guides the football. It'll be more sore tomorrow. He might still be able to play with that thing. Well, Toretto was warming up. You wonder. Pitch comes back to Highland Hickson, and nothing good. Russell Maryland was there first out of Whitney Young High School in Chicago. He's their leading tackler coming into this ball game. Be a second down coming up, maybe a yard gain on the play. Hickson has had 80 and 84 yard gains, the first two. And there is Toretto, the man we we're talking about. He's thrown only 13 passes prior to today. Jammed up, no place to go. Right now, Highland Hickson is looking for some help. Just nobody able to block. This time, Cortez Kennedy. He's out of Wilson, Arkansas, junior college transfer out of Northwest Mississippi Junior College. This is a tackle trap as they try to come across and open up the hole horizontally. Here it goes. See, here's a trap. Boom, a good penetration. They stuffed it right, up, right at the point of attack, and they couldn't get up underneath that trap block. So they're going backwards. Third down and 11 now, just out across the 15. Everybody else is going backwards, trying to run against them, too. That's right. 0 for 4 now on third downs, Michigan State. There's a little uh, draw handoff to Hickson. He bursts out of there. He's on his feet. First down. Fumbles Fumble the ball, it. but I believe it'll be ruled down where he hit nope. the turn. One guy signaling he got it. Miami has a football. Wait a minute. One guy signaled that he had it. The other guy didn't. No, no it's, still still Michigan. it's still Michigan State. Yeah. You're right, though. The back judge was pointing the other way. But running over there was Jim Kimmerling and said, no, sir, he was down. Great running on a draw play. Third and long, intense running. And you mentioned this earlier, Gary. He's a daylight runner, meaning he can find he can find the place to run. It doesn't have to be a specific point of attack. They pick up the stun inside. He finds that daylight. Now watch the leg action. Now he pulls his leg. See up over the top, Gary? Good running. He's got those big thighs, big Guys and five people bounce off of him. This time no one bounced off. Well, they dropping Cortez Kennedy for no gain. Cortez Kennedy is giving Eric Moten, uh, Eric Moten, the offensive left guard, some problems. He's the man in on down every play. now for uh, Michigan State. Getting up very slowly. Was Hickson. Hickson is limping. Island Hickson, number 30, coming to the near sideline. He's saying he's okay, but he's taking himself out of the game right now. That means we'll have a change. Tico Duckett, a freshman redshirt, will come in. Tico Duckett is their best outside runner. Now, you see on your screen Highland Hickson. He is from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His younger brother, 14 years old, was here yesterday in the locker room. I was visiting with him. He's from the same high school, Lorenzo White. Hickson will leave with 32 yards in the left carry. Zeno's on a roll. Throw back far side. Duckett and he tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Duckett has that great speed. Third in the state, a class A 100 meters in high school as a senior. He can fly. But so can the guy that tackled him. You just mo saw a moment ago, 49, Maurice Crum. They can all run over there. Yeah. Those guys can all run. Looks to me like Toretta is getting very serious about coming in and being the quarterback. With Toretta coming in, 
You don't know an awful lot about him. I know Michigan State doesn't know anything about him. I don't know much they about him. I know this. Erickson. He's a 61% complete this year for 8 for 13. Well, that's only 13 passes. Third and 11 now. Draw handoff. That's Duckett from Kalamazoo, and he's out to the 35. It'll be fourth down. Darren Smith and Maurice Crum. Boy, Crum is all over the place. They say he has radar on the helmet. He runs a 4 6 40. That's fast for a linebacker. He is so quick in reacting. He has the great instinct. Beside playing the responsibility of his defense, he can lead the responsibility once he's carried that out and flash to the football because he always is aware of where it is. That's Carroll awaiting the punt now from Butler. 9.56 left in the first half, three all. That was a good one, and Butlin hits it to the far side. That accepts a good punt, and the fair catch is made by Carroll out across the 30 to the 31 yard line. That will go as a 34 yard punt by Josh Butlin. 3 3 the score before the sellout here in Spartan Stadium. Miami is forced to make a change at quarterback. Gino Toretta has come in to run the team at quarterback. You wonder what's going through his mind. He wasn't expecting this. No, but I'll tell you this. He's the kind of kid, you know, last year he faced the number two defense in the country every day, running the opponent scout, you know, the scout offense all the time. So he's he's seen good defenses in front of him before. 6'3", 196, a redshirt freshman gets off to Conley, and Conley battles his way for a couple of yards. Dixon Edwards over there to make the stop. Let's get an upgrade now on Craig Erickson. Let's go to Cheryl Miller. Conley Carey. Gary, well, Andy Edward, Clary, who Wilson. is the athletic trainer for the, for the Hurricanes, has taken Erickson in for x-rays. They want to x-ray the finger, make sure there's nothing broken, apply some more treatment, second and, and get him out in the second half. Craig Erickson in the dressing room. He was 10 of 20 for 96 yards and an interception. Loretta, his first pass of the game. That's a safe pass, gets it off far side to Conley. Conley takes off from there. He's very close to the first down. Looks like he's got it. Did a real, the running back did, did a real good job of using his screen blockers that time. Conley didn't. He did that early in the first quarter as well. First down, Miami. First down out to the 43. There is Conley. Toretta needed something like that. Get a little confidence, complete a pass. That's the best way to start out with that. Putting something that, that you know you can complete. It's almost 100% completion. Alex Johnson now in the backfield. Now First down run. and movement. I don't know if Bobby Wilson was drawn off or not. That's right. number 97, Bobby Wilson out of Chicago. He's another junior college transfer out of Northeastern Oklahoma a and They like him a lot. He's still learning how to play. He's still learning. <laughs> you, you can see him come flying offside. Nobody moved. He's the first one to move. He's smos He's so close to the ball, he can smell the darn thing, and he still jumps offside, you know? <laughs> so the penalty five yards against Michigan State. Look at that. Miami, eight yards rushing. Michigan State having a tough time, but a lot better of it than Miami. They're going to run. Here. Five. This is Alex Johnson. And he has a first down. Inside the 45 to the 43. Benson Donaldson and Dixon Edwards over to make the stop. First down, Miami. Dixon Edwards, according to George Perlis, plays the game as fast as anybody's ever had. He runs so well. You'll notice right here that they move the receiver in close. The reason they do that is so they can pull these two linemen and run their counter gap. That's the only time they line them up in there. See, he cuts them down from behind. That allows them to get the alignment out in front of their play. Right on the first down, he throws it right into the Michigan State hands. And that is Carlos Jenkins. So the Floridian comes up with the interception, the second interception of the game. Michigan State will have the football. There is a penalty flag, so hang on. It's a personal foul against Miami. So they'll tack on 15 yards. Snow with an interception. And now Jenkins picks off one. And Toretta, who needed some confidence early, coming in relief of Erickson, that won't help. Have a dead ball, personal foul on the defense, first down. 
Here he is lined up right here. He drops off into the zone. Here's a young man, number 51, Carlos Jenkins, that wanted to go to the University of Miami. And his mom said no. She wanted him to get out of that environment in Miami and move somewhere else. She actually wanted him to go to Louisville because she liked Howard Snellenberger. And in came George Perlis, and Perlis out recruited him. He picked off his first interception of his career last week against Notre Dame. Enos has it broken up. I think that's Marilyn who got his hands up. Russell Marilyn, we mentioned him earlier. You know, sometimes you don't hear about some football players when you have a lot of good name players. But in watching the films, this guy kept jumping out at us all week long. Oh, he has that great quickness, and he gets that penetration. And when you're a little bit on the short side as a quarterback, and you set up there, and you go to throw that ball, and that guy gets his hands up. Look at him leap up off, off the ground there. See, he bats it back, you know, and that's tough. Say he has a heart as big as the state of Maryland. Second down, 10. Setting up. Setting up a screen. It's complete to Scott Seltzer, who's in a tailback. And Seltzer's inside the 45 to the 44. Cortez Kennedy over to make the stop. Now, you know Hickson took himself out of the ball game. I guess he'll be able to continue, but right now Scott Seltzer's in his place. Third down coming up, still six yards to go. Third down, six. From the 44. It's a screen pass. They get that good rush. See, they want to slow the rush down by letting them get upfield, then get the screen off. So you see Seltzer catch the ball. Now, the important thing for a running back to do here is to get up underneath those kickout blocks. And he got underneath the first one. Third and six. Enos. Oh, oh, yeah. Beautiful. Woo. And Courtney Hawkins has it first down. There were a lot of hurricanes in that vicinity, but he was on target. Hawkins, over your screen. He's going to run a square end pattern. See him on the hash mark. Now here he comes working across the zone. Like they turned him loose in that zone. Oh my God. Crumb was right there and almost acted like he expected somebody else to make the pickoff. Well, 13 yard gain. Courtney Hawkins played as a freshman last year, a true freshman. He was a Michigan player of the year, his senior year. He has a lot of Andre Risen's ability. He doesn't have his speed, but he'll jump the leap and go after him. Oh, there it is Oh my God! Where'd he come from? Well, Maryland is right now playing in their backfield. I think he's in their huddle. I think you're right. <laughs> Scott Seltzer wonders where he came from as well. Here he's lined up right here. Let's take a look and see what he does. I didn't see any offensive lineman pull. Oh, he did pull, and the tackle was blocking down on him and didn't get there quick enough. If you're going to block down on him, you better not pivot over the inside foot. You better open that inside foot and close. Seltzer remains in a tailback. It's now second and 14. He's out of Farmington, Michigan. Yard game against Miami of Ohio. He knows back to throw. And he's going to be caught this time by Bradley. First down inside the 20. James Bradley. See Bradley number three as he comes off. Now he's going to work across the zone defense. See, see he's wrist working there. See, he's not running full speed. He's looking for the hole. He found the hole. The ball was there in time. That's the critical thing. Get the ball there in time. Bradley, a junior college transfer out of Ellsworth in Iowa, had a 30-yard touchdown catch last week. Five team yard game. And he's inside the 20 to the 18. They went to a five down lineman defense again that time. Boy, that's tough to run against. Five big horses in there, and they can all move. There's Newbill in on that particular tackle. Brings up second down. So Enos has thrown the ball very well on this drive, completing two, one to Hawkins, and then coming back to Bradley. Throwing it with a lot of authority. Well, you remember commenting to me on Thursday in the practice field how well he was throwing the ball. You were impressed. Good evaluator. He's waited three years to be the quarterback. And now he rolls out far side to the 15, 10, and he takes it in. Touchdown, Michigan State.
18 yards on the bootleg. Langlo now to attempt the point after. See, he's been perfect from that department this year, 8 of 8. Picked on the way, and Michigan State has a 10 to 3 lead. Great job setting it up with a fake. And 19 yards later, he takes it in. The Michigan State people do such a good job, and they allowed us to go into that Jack Breslin Center. First people to be in there, and what a facility that's going to be for Judd Heathcote and the Spartans. Well, Dan Enos threw his first touchdown pass. Now his first running touchdown of his career. This was action away to get the flow this way. It comes out. It's run all the way. There's no pass run option on this. Gets the fake away. Lineman pulling. He's out there. It's a naked bootleg. Now he has the running back out there. Steve Montgomery who gets a key block downfield. He gets it in the end zone for six points. Boy, he had some good footwork, didn't he, to stay yes, in bounds? Alex Johnson? No, it's going to be Randall Hill coming up with this kickoff return. Look out. Here he goes, and Hill brings it out to the 44-yard line. Whoop, does he scoot? Ooh, well, he's our fastest guy. I guess he should scoot. You can see why he's averaging 22.6 yards of return. Why? He went past those people like they were standing still. Out of the Miami area, 33-yard kickoff return. Now Toretto will come in to run the team at quarterback. Turn the ball over, you get beat more often than not. See that turnover, interception, they take it on in. This time they'll come with two receivers split to the near side. The end of the ball game is Doyle Aaron, one of those, and Dale Tompkins the other. Toretta gets off the point, and he's hit, and that's Vanderbeek. Matt Vanderbeek, senior out of Holland, Michigan, nailed it. We've been told that Craig Erickson is now Vanderbilt. headed to the 66, hospital for Vanderbilt. some extensive x-rays. That's scary. It is. Now, they have another quarterback with them, Brian Forte, a true freshman, who they brought along on the trip, but they want to redshirt Second him. And 11. No one, by the way, has scored on that Miami in the second quarter prior to today. They were 55 to nothing in that department. Our side to pick the chance. 45 yard line. Dixon Edwards is over there. Michigan State reacting pretty well. You know, normally when Miami's offense has turned it over, the defense has gone in and shut them down. This time they didn't do it. You see this the Miami offense turning it over 13 times and giving up one field goal. Add now one touchdown today. And again, the first point scored in the second quarter against them this year. They thought this would be a barometer, their toughest test to date, and it's going to be exactly that. Timing is off there. And uh, is off. See, they're losing their poise a little bit right now. They better regroup. I think the center snapped that on a different cadence than the rest of the squad was expecting it. Bobby Garcia is the center. This is their third road trip of the year, but they're meeting the best football team they faced this year thus far. Wins coming earlier this year Any against offense? opponents that really, everybody will admit, was not that stiff. Wisconsin, California, and last week, Missouri. So now it's 3rd and 14, and Toretta and Miami need to have something going good for them. Pressure coming, and on. Nice what a throw complete to Darrell, I should say Doyle Aaron at the 45. And Reidinger was coming after Toretto on that play. And he did a real good job of getting that off under duress, as you said, because Reidinger, Reidinger came around from right here, came all the way around on a stunt and got right into his face, and he still completed the ball. Good job by Gino. Here he comes, he fires that into that zone, does a nice job of getting it. That's a tough throw under that kind of play. That's a long throw. You bet it is. 16-yard game to the 45. And they help him. What an out play action, rolling out. He's got the corner. He wants to run. Throws. Oh, and Dawkins has got it. to the 20. And on his feet to the 19. Get off, get off, get off. On two passes, Gino Toretta has looked excellent. 
First down, just inside the 20. Dawkins, their leading receiver coming into this game out of Vero Beach. Baltimore hangs on there. There'll be a game tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern here on ABC. Just inside the 20 now. All of a sudden, Miami's on the move. the tight end and that'll be good for eight yards. Percy Snow on the stop along with Donaldson. As we mentioned tomorrow live three o'clock Eastern Baltimore against Toronto if needed. Baltimore leading three to one as you just saw a moment ago in the seventh inning. Chodzinski glad probably have Toretta in there. That's the first catch he's made. The first ball has been thrown within the area where he could come up with it. it was now set up a second down and two yards to go. That's the first down goes out of bounds at the 18 yard line should say eight yard line and Vincent Donaldson over there to make the stop first down stops the clock with 258 see that's the same action they threw that play action pass off a minute ago that really ties you up the Prudential College scoreboard with Roger Twybell will be coming up at halftime scores highlights. down now at about the eight. Breaking the tackle is Johnson. To the ten, to the five. Picking up about three yards on the play. Alan Holler coming over out of the Lansing area. His mother's a teacher here. Holler makes the stop the five yard line. Second down there. I wonder if this kind of offense frustrates Percy Snow, the All-American linebacker candidate, the big inside linebacker. He doesn't get to hit big many people running the ball. Well, yeah. they stretch it so much horizontally. <laughs> Second and goal from the five. Conley comes in motion. Three wide outs to the top of the field. Toretto looking up the middle. Wesley Carroll, touchdown, Miami. Well, Toretta all of a sudden got a burst of confidence and he marched this team. Five yard touchdown strike to Wesley Carroll. Third touchdown catch of the year for Carroll. That was impressive. He did a nice job. He was very composed. And, uh, you know, like we said earlier, a couple of those strokes were, were under duress. Huerta now trying to tie this ball game up. And he does exactly that. It's even a 10. He's going to appear from the left side of your screen. You see a nice end zone shot right there. He's looking to his right. He's looking the people off. Now he turns back to the inside, and there he appears right down the hole. Touchdown. Here it is again. Here he gives it signal. I did it, Mom. Beretta in relief of Erickson. Gets the job done. Dino Toretta was five of five for 56 yards and this guy 81 Wesley Carroll latched on to the touchdown catch of five yards. So Toretta has made a statement here coming in relief of the injured Craig Erickson. Well tying had, this ball game up. He had thrown he hadn't thrown a touchdown coming into this ball game but he had appeared like we said. Now he's got his first one that's going to pump him up just that much more. Huerta will be kicking off Eddie Brown back deep for Michigan State. 214 left in this first half. It's one that's angling to the near corner and makes it in the end zone for the touchback. That would have been a tough one to catch up with. Line drive had a lot on it. And at the 20 yard line now, Michigan State will have it. Wesley Carroll out of the uh, Cleveland, Ohio area. Grew up in the ghetto area there. There was the drive. 57 yards and as we mentioned Toretta five of five on the drive. So from the 20 yard line the second ranked team in the country Miami having their handful as they are now tied with Michigan State at 10 Gary Bender along with Dick Vermeule and Cheryl Miller sell out crowd here at the 214 mark of the second quarter. Absolutely no place to go. And the All-American candidate, Greg Mark, downed him there. 
They talk about him as being just a big, tall basketball type player. He just runs around so well. Lean, not all that big at 244 pounds. Well, I mean, he's been, he's been in the backfield most of his career there. 21 sacks, 84 quarterback pressures coming into the seat and coming into this ball game. And as you said, he was an outstanding high school basketball player. Well, they dunked the ball, and Jimmy Johnson was so impressed he recruited him. But they say he just runs around like a big, lanky basketball player. Eno's giving out now to uh, Seltzer and Seltzer. Nothing doing again, and on two running plays, they've netted nothing. Gary, uh, right now, Maurice Crum, number 49, the normal All-American outside linebacker, is playing in the middle in Michael Barrow's spot, number 56. As an end result, they were going to move Darren Smith possibly over in Crum's spot. As we Crum's mentioned, Bernard Clark is out with the knee injury, so that was a move they were anticipating should they need him, and that's where he is right now. Evidently, they felt they needed him. Timeout is called. And with uh, 126 left, 10-10 our score. We want to remind you the next Saturday, ABC's College Football will present regional coverage. An exciting Big Ten or Pac-10 matchup beginning live at 3.30 Eastern. Be sure now to check your local listings for the game in your area. That's next Saturday. So the timeout called by Michigan State. And they have checked that Miami and Miami has one left and Michigan State has all three of theirs with 126 Miami still wants to get this football with that kind of attack. You're going to stop the clock as soon as you can. They can go ahead and afford to use one of those timeouts. So third down coming up third and ten. Ryan Smolenski has checked in at a wide receiver spot along with Courtney Hawkins. And Bradley to the top of the field. Third down 10. Smolenski who just checked in makes the catch. It's going to be short of the first down, however. He needed to get out close to the 30, and Roland Smith was over there to make the stop. So it'll be fourth down. Just a simple little out pattern. He, he noticed that this time that they roll the quarterback out to get him out from beneath that pressure that you could oh, receive from inside. Now here he is, just running a little out pattern. Here it's him, pivot to the inside, out to the sideline. But it's still short, fourth down and a yard to go. So Butlin will punt, Miami with one timeout remaining. Hey, let's go now, let's go. We understand that Craig Erickson has suffered a fracture on the knuckle of the right hand and is out for the remainder of the game. Snap to Butlin, and he hits a wobbly one to the near side. And a flag is thrown as the ball will be blown dead at the 33-yard line. 110 left now in this first half. That will go as a 39-yard punt. Let's see what the penalty is all about. Well, that really changes the picture for Miami. They have a true freshman. Brian Forte, who they won to redshirt, but if Erickson is out, they may have to get him ready to play along with Toretta. Well, that red shirt's going to turn into a white and orange shirt, because that's what it's going to turn into. Face mask violation against Michigan State. Boy, I tell you, George Perlis's team has really been shooting themselves in the foot, haven't they? <laughs> the personal fouls, and he's got a disheveled look about him right now. First down. You think he might bring that up at halftime? Well, lads, I'm a minute. little bit upset with you. You've uh, committed a foul or two. He's a very intense, tough guy. He, he treats his kids just like he treats his own kids. Yeah. You know, he did. He, he, that's a tight family. Yep. He's going to say, gentlemen, you have hurricane. committed a few discretions. And I am and I used to whizzed. <laughs> Coretta back now with a minute nine and one timeout. And Carroll and oh. the receiver overthrown. You know, Mike Iquinella, for some reason, took his eye off the ball and went for the receiver. If he'd have watched the ball, I think he could have picked it. Well, Carroll is still uh, down on the uh, field. So Wesley Carroll, who caught the touchdown pass a moment ago, hit the ground hard. I don't think Iquinella made contact, did he? When he came flying up, there is Carroll. Carroll, coming from the Cleveland area, has really battled back from some adversity. His mother was murdered. He's had a brother who's had all kinds of problems, but he's come to Miami and he's reconstructed his life. Here's the end zone shot. Now you'll see the safety 44 by Mike Quinella. I don't think he hit him. I think he just came down hard on his right shoulder, taking another look. See, he reached for the ball. Now he's coming down. Watch his right, right hand, right shoulder. I don't think there's any contact made there unless a 
foot hit him in the helmet. I think it was one of those uh, impact type things hitting the plane surface. He's up, as you can see, walking. Iquinella is six foot four. That is tall for a safety. I really think he took his eye off the football and started watching the receiver. And if he'd have maintained concentration on the ball, he might have had a, a pass interception. Second down, Second 10 now. Minute six left in this first half. 10 all from Spartan Stadium. Trips receivers to the top of the field. Three wide outs. Conley in motion. Beretta to Dawkins. Dawkins gets eight yards on the play. Reddish pass complete. This is no Carlos Jenkins over Tackle there. I Jenkins. am in a hurry up situation now, going without the huddle. You see the time in the right hand portion of the screen. They set the ball. Third down, a yard to go. Officials timeout. They were seeing if he got the first down. That's the reason you stopped the clock. And the fans booing because you shouldn't stop the clock unless you move the chains. So they were saving some time for it. And now a flag is thrown as they give off the first movement. Yeah. What was uh, being booed is the fans thought that clock should have continued. The officials were trying to see if they need to measure for a first down, I think. And in the interim time, they had stopped the clock. And now with 40 seconds, let's see what this is all about. Dead ball, the illegal procedure, Miami. The Miami will be backed up five yards. Legal procedure, back to the Dead ball, illegal start. Here you Money are offense. in a two-minute offense Let's period go. right now, two-minute speed drill with your backup quarterback, and the people aren't used to, the first unit aren't used to listening to this guy Third, run the offense, and, and sometimes that's the, the problem. Three. They don't get that many reps when yeah. you start thinking about it. And they're not used to his voice. They can't hear everything he says. Third down now, six yards to go. Toretta to Carroll, who checked back in, can't quite come up with it. That was close to being a big game. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like that play is open. Well, they're, you know, throw, they're throwing down the seams of the zone. They've got you stretched from sideline to sideline, and they're trying to hit the creases in between the defenders. You can see right here Mike Iquinella, number 44, will appear. You're going to see him coming down and hit these seams. He throws it right down the hole, in the hole. Oh, ran out of time. Punt the football. Tim Corral is back to punt the football. Now out of the Washington State of Washington area. Hunts this one very wobbly kick. Courtney Hawkins will have a hit. It takes a Michigan State bounce. They'll down at the 33 with 19 seconds left in this first half. That's Sean Thompson, the brother of Billy Thompson, who played for the Lakers and now with the Miami Heat. Just short of the 34 with 19 seconds. 10 all the score and Perlis talking to Dan Enos. Right. Dan Enos out of the Dearborn, Michigan area. Played in seven games last year in a backup to Bobby McAllister. And the players really like him. They want him to have some success. He waited a long time to become the starting quarterback. Well, I visited with him about it. He is excited. You know, the thing that impressed him, he said most about Miami, is that the defense and everything is, is the ability of all of those guys to run. You really got to make sure you know where you're throwing the football because they can cover a lot of ground. To Seltzer. You know, we've never seen Hickson come back in after he went off. And Seltzer is stopped by Richard Newbell. Fans booing, but uh, George Purvis says, let's just go into the locker room with this tie. They will not take another snap, and at the halfway point, second rank Miami in a battle. We'll return with more college football action between Miami and Michigan State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The uh, band made up of alumni members mixed in with the current band here at Michigan State. Well, Dick Vermeil, looks like some of that scouting report that Michigan State had ready for Miami is working pretty well. And I mean a scouting report. Here's, here's a scouting report put together by the defensive staff at Michigan State covering Miami's offense. 70 pages of materials. It's obvious that the defensive team has assimilated this information. They're playing well. Well, they're even at 10. Of course, a big story is injury to Craig Erickson, and it uh, doesn't look good for him not only today, but maybe the remainder of the season. Well, I, I would question you'd come back. You know, that's going to take at least six weeks to heal, you know. 
fractured knuckle on the passing hand. There is a look at it. As you mentioned earlier a couple of times, that is kind of the guide finger when you throw the football, the x-rays indicating the fractured finger. Now, Gino Toretta came in and did a very creditable job, especially on that one drive. But let's go back now with a 10-10 score, and the uh, first thing we're going to show you is the other quarterback, Dan Enos, who really has done a good job, and he scores on this bootleg. Well, this shows his ability to scramble as well. This is designed run all the way. No pass option downfield. Designed, we watched him run it on the practice field the other day in their goal line approach. 19-yard run. At that time, Michigan State led it 10-3. Then Erickson got hurt. Toretta came in, and he connects now with Wesley Carroll. A little slant pattern from the right side of your screen. He beat the defender inside on that, and you shouldn't let a guy inside you down in that territory. 10-10 the score now. We were speculating for a while about the injury to Highland Hickson. We know about Craig Erickson. You can tell how disappointed he is. Oh, gosh, you can imagine how the coaches feel as well. But Highland Hickson had a bruised knee in the first half, but he will return in the second half. And Michigan State needs his running because they were shut down in this first half. 10-10 the score. We're going to be back now with a kickoff of the second half in just a moment. Ten, ten, the score. Carlos Huerta will be kicking off for Miami. Back deep is Eddie Brown for Michigan State. Brown comes up close to the 20-yard line, and the Spartans will set it up there. That was Herbert James down to make the stop on the special teams. Now there is Craig Erickson. Looks like they had that finger in a splint now, and of course the ice being applied. Saw his head down a while ago. How disappointing. He's, oh, yeah. he's you know, the other thing is a football player, if you were a linebacker or running back or a defensive lineman, you'd play with that finger. But here you are. You're a touch position. You're the quarterback. No way. So Dan Enos will continue to run the team at quarterback. And it looks like Hickson is back in. He is at the tailback spot. He had the bruised knee. They just rested him up. Getting ready for the second half of play. That's Montgomery, the pullback, coming in after him. He knows he's in trouble. He's going to be stormed down inside the 10. And coming flying through was Michael Barrow. He is a redshirt freshman out of Homestead, Florida, playing in place of Bernard Clark, and he came through quickly. Well, the defensive coordinator for Miami, Sonny Lubick, said that they could shut him down on that first down running play and get him in set and long. Second and long, we could control the ball game, and they did at that time by just bringing the linebackers. Now, again, a reminder, if Baltimore wins in that game, tomorrow you will see the telecast. But right now, Toronto's trying to close it out. Second and 20 after that loss, inside the 10-yard line. Not the way you want to start your second half. Give to Hickson. Hickson able to advance outside the 10, maybe to the 13-yard line. Willis Pagis, number 58, out of Miami, who was a linebacker in high school and the Florida Player of the Year his senior year. On the stop. Looking at the stats, 196 yards in total offense for Miami, but look at the penalty yards. You know, Michigan State appears to have a lot of yards running with 86. But remember, 31 of those yards came on the, on the bad snap, punt, and then run. That's right. Third down, 17. Enos. Hickson. Hickson's got some running room and gets out to the 20, and he's still going to be 10 yards short of the first down. Richard the man Newbell down. over there, and it's a Miami player. Richard Newbell. It looks like that is Greg Mark. It's Mark that's down at the one-yard line. Hickson putting his shoe back on, but the story is at the goal line area. Greg Mark, the All-American candidate, is down. He really doesn't have any injury history. They're working on his knee. Last year, they had the All-American Bill Hawkins in the defensive line. They thought this guy would be the next one. Hawkins, the number one draft pick of the Rams. There he is. 6'4". They list him at about 244, but really he's up a little over that. Let's see if we can pick up what happened there. Here's a telestrator look at it from up high. He's playing right here, and you'll see he'll work to the outside, and it appears that he gets his leg caught underneath him as he's working to the outside on Bob Kula, number 63. Now see him right here. Now watch him right there. He got it caught underneath him, and down he goes. That artificial surface, you get those cleats hung up, don't you? Yeah, I don't know if that was the case in this. I really don't. It, it looked like maybe a hyperextension rather than, you know, a, a, a true joint type injury. 94, Greg Mark. He's not walking very well, I'll tell you no, that. No, he's not. Here's the trainer's Andy Carey, head trainer. And 
helping him off the field. So Erickson goes down, and now Mark will leave the football game. He's from Pensacken High School in New Jersey. He was an invaluable player last year. They moved him all around, defensive tackle, defensive end. He's graduated. He already has his degree. He's yeah. going to graduate school right now. Fine student. Well, Butlin will go back to punt when we pick up the action. He's inside the five-yard line. Indian Josh Butlin. Wesley Carroll will receive it. There he is. 13-28 left in the third quarter. 10-10 the score. You know, many times when you lose your great player on offense, the defense just rises to the occasion and takes over. And boy, that series was an impressive series of defense. Snap is a good one. Out of time, and he hits it very hits it high. Carroll's going to have to call for the third catch. Drops it. Gets that out of bounds. He batted it out of bounds very alertly. Good move. Back at the 36-yard line. So Michigan State comes out of there in pretty good shape. That will go as a 44-yard punt at the, at the 36. Miami will have their first offensive opportunity of the second half. Well, as we come back, that's a look at Greg Mark, who went down on that previous series, and uh, maybe they're going to take him into the dressing room, or maybe just uh, look him over there. I guess that's what they're going to do, is sitting down there. Understand, Toronto winning 4-3 over Baltimore. They clinched the American League East, and so there'll be no game tomorrow on ABC. As the Blue Jays get it done under Ciro Gaston. Back to throws, Toretta. And that ball is bobbled. It's not a complete pass. That was Wesley Carroll trying to make the grab at the 45-yard line. Gino Toretta in that first half was 7 of 10 for 75 yards. What he really wanted to do on this was throw the ball to the tight end on the right side of the screen, and he couldn't get it there. Percy Snow dropped into it, so he turns over and goes into the slot. Second and 10 from the 36. So now second and 10 from the 36-yard line. Toretta will draw a handoff to Conley, breaks the tackle, and Conley gets a first down. He is so tough, only 170 pounds. He bounces all over people. And that time, getting what looked like maybe no gain into a first down. 11 yard pickup on the play. So they clinch the division title. Boy, they've been packing them in in that new Sky Dome up in Toronto. And ABC at the World Series. First down at the 47 and a half yard line. Doyle Lahren now split out to the top of the field. Hawkins to the near side. 10 10 our score. Credit giving off this time to Alex Johnson. And Johnson crosses into the Michigan State end of the field just across the 50 yard line. 21, Johnson. That's Ridinger, number 40, one of those on the stop. Two time Class A heavyweight wrestling champion in high school. He can move his body around. So uh, Mark heading into the locker room. I'd be optimistic about how he's walking. I would say it's not a serious knee injury, just based on my experience. Second down now, eight yards to go. Toretta, good protection. Gets it off to Dawkins. Dawkins for the first down. Big first down inside the 40. Cheryl Miller, let's go to you. What's the update on Greg Mark? Okay, Gary, they say they're taking him down into the locker room to get a brace on to get him taped up. They said he has sprained his medial collateral ligament, but he'll return in the game, so it's not as serious. And, Coach, you, you called it. <laughs> I don't think he'll come back, though, Cheryl, unless he just wants to come back and say hello to you. <laughs> Boy, that's the truth. I tell you, this she, entire She was week. an attraction around this game. Oh, I like guess you. everybody wanted her autograph. She really was becoming a very popular figure. Here's again now to Johnson, bursts through, 20, 15, 10, Alex Johnson, touchdown Miami. Touchdown. 38 yards. 38 yards, number 41, Alex Johnson. Johnson, 38 yards. You're going to note right here a real nice pull and, and trap out and a tackle lead on this counter play. Key to the play, watch the kickout block, here it comes. Bang, he knocks it out. The tackle goes up in the hole, gets a block on the linebacker, and boy, does he scoot. Safety has to make that play. Bad tackling. So Alex Johnson, 38 Where yards, gives Miami the lead. Huerta to attempt the point after the 11.52 mark. Did that happened quick. Did oh. that happen quick? He got <laughs> to that initial defense, and it was all over. Huerta's 
get the jump for good. 17-10. So Miami, who led earlier in this game, three to nothing, have taken the lead again. Big kick out block, point of attack. Here it is, bang, right there. Good lead blocks right there. Boy, that happened quick. Mike Sullivan was That's the guy speed. that came pulling on the play. And Searcy also helped. And Johnson went 38 yards. And Michigan State's playing catch up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't. Colorado has marched through a very tough schedule, continuing to play well. And you're looking at Alex Johnson, their fastest running back, as he burst to a 38 yard six pointer. First touchdown of the year for him. Didn't take him long, one minute and 15 seconds. <laughs> Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, Cheryl Miller, as we have now 11.52 left in the third. Miami with a 17-10 lead as Huerta will kick off to the Spartans. And Brown has trouble with it. Finally picks it up and runs out of there with it. Boy, what a tough time Eddie Brown had. And eventually, Michigan State will have it at the 16. Now, the ball was not down with him because he never had control of it when he hit the control. ground. And those balls are awfully hard to feel. That was just, you know, about 10 feet off the ground, coming right at you, sort of into the wind type thing, bouncing around. It's tough to feel it. Junior college transfer from Grand Rapids. Interesting. Ten points. Notre Dame at 87. Well, it's not going to be enough today if Michigan State's going to want to win this one. They come out with Hawkins and Bradley split out. Last series just absolutely went nowhere as they started the second half. Enos off to Tico Duckett and Duckett out to the 21. Well, he is quick. They think he has some greatness ahead of him. He's a redshirt out of Kalamazoo. And uh, they like his outside ability, still kind of feeling his way around. Well, he was fifth in the Big Ten indoor 55 meter dash at 6'4. He can really move, and they want to take advantage of that speed in the outside. But that was a direct shot straight up the gut, so he has the courage to take it inside as well. Picked up five, second down and five. 17 to go, third quarter. Lead for the second time. This is Duckett again. Duckett drives from behind and slammed downward. Cortez Kennedy just kind of unceremoniously spun him around and slammed him down there. You know, if I were a running back, I don't think I'd like to be rotated in and out of the ball game. You just get in rhythm, you just get going, and you're out of the ball game. That I've, it's been my experience when a running back carries the ball the fifth, sixth, eighth, ninth, tenth, all of a sudden he gets his momentum going and becomes a better runner. Third down, three yards to go. Dan Enos, who scored a 19-yard touchdown bootleg. And now there's movement. That's Shane Curry jumping, number 44. He is a transfer from Georgia Tech, played his high school football in Cincinnati. You know, and he's used to playing over on the left side behind Willis Pagish and sharing the time. Now he's over there on the right side, and I don't know if that's affecting his Dead concentration ball. or what. Encroachment on the defense. First, First down. down. They but needed only three, they get five, and that moves the ball out to the 28, and that might give State something to get started with. They need some success here in this early part of the second half. Two wideouts to the top of the field. Rolling that way is Dan Enos. He's going to take off. Slides Good decision. To about a five-yard gain. Good decision. He wanted to throw the ball into the zone. The zone coverage just sagged off, covered it. He didn't want to throw that interception. He tucked it under his arm, and off he goes. Good pass defense as well. Behind the scrimmage now will be the 32-yard line, second and five. You know what I haven't seen is the Miami defense 46 uh, bear defense that Buddy Ryan showed them how to play. Uh, they've been playing at about 12 snaps a game prior to this game, but we haven't seen it yet this game. What they, uh, in fact, do is get into an eight-man front when they play it. Screen. It's Duckett. And Duckett out to the 42, and that'll be a first down. Bobby Harden over to make the, stop, the strong safety. Let's go down now to Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Gary. With me is one of the biggest Spartan fans, the Governor Blanchard. And Governor, you know, you must be very excited the way that the team has played so far. Well, they've contained them reasonably well, but we're going to have to do some passing. 
and uh, we're still in the game. And this is a very much underrated Spartan squad. And I think Miami, by the way, is probably underrated as well. So we have a good chance to win this game. It's a young team uh, hung in, and we're proud of it. I want to know, when the Wolverines and Spartans play, who do your loyalties go to? Well, I root for Michigan State, but I do root for the Wolverines in every other Final event, play. including the NC2A Basketball Championship at the Rose Bowl last year. But I went to Michigan State. I'm a proud Spartan. And there's no way I would try to conceal that. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy the game, guys. <laughs> okay, the he sounds like a coach. Just, you know, he sounds like he was trying to give uh, George Perlis some tips here. That's right. Well, the state capitol <laughs> building a few blocks away from here. I think you better listen to the governor too, huh? <laughs> there's a penalty on that last play. Did you hear him say? I think I've got a few passes in there. Yeah. Typical alum, huh? Cortez Kennedy made the stop on Tico Duckett, but we're waiting now on what this penalty is all about. We have a hold on the offense. Decline. Holding. Second down. Decline. Huh. Second down. And 14 yards to go. So they decline the penalty. Three wide outs on this play. Duckett is the running back behind Danny. Second Inos. and 14. He knows. Uh oh. Setting up a little screen, completes it to Duckett. Duckett can't get open because Roland Smith wouldn't let him get away. And he made the stop. Now let's go to New York. Here's Roger Twyla. Roger, thank you very much. As we have now at the 8:47 mark of this third quarter, a third and 15, and Miami's Maryland jumped, and the flags come out. <laughs> Russell Maryland getting too excited, or does somebody move? <laughs> they call him the conscience. He's such a, a religious guy. He's really had a great impact on this team. Great heart. Also, they call him the Dancing Bear. He's got all kinds of nicknames. Well, I talked to him yesterday on the practice field, and I asked him, I said, just what do you think your responsibilities really are? Dead ball, really are? encroachment on the defense, third down. As a defensive lineman, he said, Coach, all I really want to do is keep the linebackers free and make them block me so the linebacker can make the tackle. Then if I can make the tackle, hey, that's all the better. But you know what? He was really excited about seeing Cheryl Miller. He said, is that Cheryl Miller? Jeez, that's the Olympic basketball player? Is that her? That's the truth. He was that's really right. excited. We're carrying her luggage now. <laughs> third down and 10. That's some time. Now taking off. Coverage is there. He had time to throw the ball, just nothing open, and he's dropped to the 40. That's Eric Miller. Now Miller is in there in the place of Greg Mark. Miller is a guy who uh, separated his shoulder in the spring, you know, sophomore out of Palm Beach Gardens. They like him a lot, and now he's going to see a lot of playing time with Greg Mark Hurst. He bet he will. Fourth down, 13 to go. Butlin will kick. Carroll goes back for Miami. Michigan State has not been able to move the ball out of their own end of the Bad field. Down. Yeah, and he's going to run up. He's going to kick this one. It's blocked. It's blocked by Darren Smith. And the ball is loose inside the 20. It's picked up by Farms of Miami, and the Hurricanes have a major opportunity. That's the guy, 45, Darren Smith. It was Mark Shapiro who bounced it back to this guy, Butlin. Smith got a hand on it. More than a hand, a body on it. He's going to have to be a shortstop to field this one. See, he got the bad snap. That's the third bad snap. Second one today. He had last, uh, one last week against Notre Dame on a field goal. And I think he made a good decision trying to punt that football, too. He gained his composure, picked it up, and then went to try to punt it, and then someone gives it right back to him, right in the face. You get a punt block, you normally lose the football game. Well, right now, they're set up at the 13-yard line. Toretta throwing to Conley. And Conley close to the 10-yard line. Last week, Miami had two of their punts tipped. <laughs> but here today, Michigan State has one blocked, and they're having a tough time snapping the football. I tell you, un it's unbelievable that snapping the ball is becoming a lost art. You know, there are pro teams where people make a professional football team just because they can snap the ball. Well, they have recruited one. Michigan State has a freshman, but the way it's going right now, they may have him there doing the job next week. Second down, six yards to go. Conley goes in motion. Toretta over the middle, broken up, and 
and almost oh. intercepted. Great play by Dixon Edwards. Similar to what they scored on early. Look to the weak side, then come back and throw it down the middle for the touchdown. Successful last time. This time they couldn't do it. You'll notice on this shot that he quarterback is going to come back and he's going to look this way, trying to think here, and he's going to try to get it down in here, which he scored earlier in the second quarter on, but he couldn't get it there this time. He's looking left, looking left, can't get it there. It comes back to the middle. That real nice play by Edwards. They'd like to make him settle for the field goal. Third down and six. Toretta. Around, being chased by Bill Johnson. And just threw it away. Bill Johnson, who checked in on that play, giving Vanderbeek a blow, then came in to the backfield, hurried it up, and it's fourth down. They were fortunate to come out of there, and, you know, with this situation, just getting a field goal attempt. They haven't made it yet, but boy, they're, you know, that kind of offense, many times you get it in there. You know? So Huerta will attempt a 27-yard field goal. Talao will hold. Mike Azer to snap. He hasn't missed one in his career. From his distance. And he nails that one. And so now Miami has built their lead to 10 points. Ten, 10 unanswered points thus far in the second half. 6.42 left in the third quarter. Huerta from 27 yards away. What position does that guy play? Sparty, rededicated today, 44 years old, that statue, and they refurbished it. Where to now two of two on the field goal department, hit a 32-yarder to start the game back in the first quarter, and now with a 27-yarder as Eddie Brown is back. Spartans now down by 10. Sort of a knuckle ball, and that ball is going to make it out of bounds for the five-yard penalty. So they will have to kick over. So Huerta will have to kick off once again. You wonder, Dick, uh, what's going to get Michigan State's offense rolling again? They've had two opportunities and really haven't been able to get anything going at all. Well, I do think, too, in, at halftime, that Sonny Lubbock, the defensive coach for Miami, has decided to, to do a little more pressure defense on first down and go after him committing a linebacker and also changing the alignment of the front. Instead of just sitting in the 4-3, he's covered people differently. And uh, here we have a good shot of a snapper getting ready. <laughs> Mark Shapiro out of yeah. Farmington Hills, and he had a tough time last week. He says, forget it, I don't want to practice anymore. Yeah. Anyway, he's a walk-on, and right now he's saying to himself, why did I ever want to play this game? because of the problems he's had today it's really cost this Michigan State team. This is what's great about college football. You give it you put yourself in a pressure situation you learn how to handle it. you learn to come back from adversity and, and you grow as a person. That's a contribution that goes way beyond blocking and tackling. He'll come out of it. He'll be fine next week. The next one he's going to snap will be a good one. That's a good lesson. Well, for kids him. are really resilient at that of age. Of course if I was coaching him I'd kill him. <laughs> <laughs> And now we got to the bottom of it. <laughs> but really, I tell you, it, 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 you get a lot out of playing college football. Sometimes not all good. I mean, there's some adversity you just soon go without. You have to learn how to handle it. Well, this is a weird one, too. And finally, Brown's going to try to get it. Look at that ball. He finally picks it up and gets out to the 23 yard. And that ball, all of a sudden, bounced straight up. And he was fortunate to get back there and pick it up in time. And Darryl Darryl Williams up. is down there. I don't think he's kicking it that way on purpose, but all his last three kickoffs have gone that way. Maybe he is. He doesn't look upset. You know, if kicker kicks the ball poorly, he always walks off the field mad. And he, look at he's got a half smile on his face. He must be doing that on purpose. We have an update on Highland Hickson. That knee bothering him so much, they're going to keep him out of the rest of the game. He's yeah, got yeah. ice on it. He tried to return, so Tico Duckett is in there again. Now he, along with Seltzer, are the remaining tailbacks. They already had Blake Easel. He was hurt last week. There's a gift to the freshman, and Duckett out to the 25. You think you got all kinds of depth in a spot? All of a sudden, you're down to two guys. I don't know how many times in my coaching career where I said, geez, we got a lot of guys at this position. You know, this is our strongest spot. And all of a sudden, they start dropping off. This could happen here. We would like to pause now five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves.
Back at Spartan Stadium, 20 to 10, Miami with the lead. Second and second for Michigan State. Enos throwing down. It's the tight end, Dwayne Young, who tried to make the catch. There's a flag thrown at the point of impact. Yeah, Shane Curry hit Dan Enos. They called that he put a blow to the head. Here's Shane Curry, like you said. Roughing the passer, yeah. so that will help Michigan State immensely. Give them the first down. So I have a personal foul. Roughing the passer with a blow to the head. First down. Let's look at it, Dick. Pick it up. Take a look at it here, isolated. You'll see the quarterback back there. Now, here comes Shane right around the outside, and there he hits it. Ooh. See, and he put his helmet right up in his ear, and that, they're going to call you for that. Big shot, so the first down now, out to the 42, and Michigan State now try to build their offense from that point, which is stagnated here in the second half. There's didn't Curry. didn't do anything. He says, I didn't do anything wrong. We saw it. We had it on tape, right? The evidence is there. You know, throwing deep. Down there is Courtney Hawkins. He's got it. is up on top. He's one of these two receivers, Gary. I'm not sure which one, but they come up now. They hit the seam in the zone. Quarterback rolled out nicely and hit him right there between the safeties. Good zone pattern. Courtney is the inside man. He's the slot man. Here he is right down there in between the two guys. Here's the strong safety and the free safety. That should never happen to that defense. 42-yard gain to the 15-yard line. Give to Duncan, and Duncan is swarmed under for a yard loss on the play. Richard Newbell, the first to get there. Also, Russell Maryland. This guy gave Michigan State a new life, and Enos promptly capitalized on it with a 42-yard strike. Shane Curry, the guy for roughing the passer. He was the guy that set this all up, and you know how he must feel. Yeah, he made 40 tackles as a freshman at Georgia Tech, then transferred. Second down, 11 yards to go. Here's that play action. He knows keeping. 10, 5, diving towards the corner. He's a yard short of the first, or I should say of the touchdown. Charles Farms caught up with him, and Enos really can run well. He's quick. Yeah, you can see that he is a competitor. Taking a look now, you're going to see this action like this, fake it and come out. He has the lead blocker with that running back. He freezes the backers inside. See, now he fakes it to him. He has the ball in his hip. Run all the way. Gets a good block. But Montgomery gets up inside the seam. Farms gets over there and makes the tackle. They mark it at the half-yard line. He scored on a 19-yard run, and that was a 16-yard keeper. First and goal at the half yard line. Same play they used a while ago. Get straight ahead to Duckett. No signal that he got in on that one. It's going to bring up second down. Running from the eye back position, the tail back position, deep in the backfield, you're not going to score running in there low. You're back in the eye. You got to come up and jump and get up over the top. Don't go in there and bury yourself like he did. Inexperienced tailback. Absolutely. Duckett has not played. They already have Hickson out, Ezor is out, and now Duckett will try to get it in as it's going to be second down, and Dennis Erickson hoping his defense somehow can keep him out of the end zone. 4.26 left in the third quarter. Seventh play of the drive coming up. And to Duckett. Wow. Now they are so quick, Gary. Barrow was there. Newbell was there. Newbell just flashes it. Picture it. Hey, look at this now. Watch the contact coming from the left side of your screen. Boom. Penetration. Wow. Penetration with Ray Barry also coming up from the right. corner. Yeah. He slammed through. There's Newbell, though, who led the point of attack. It's third and goal, and now they're back at the two-yard line. Gone backwards. Well, it still goes back to that first down and inches play when you don't get up over the top. Big third down in this game. Enos wanting to throw. He's in trouble. He's going to be sacked. Ray Berry's got him. They were in mistake. They were screwed up in their alignment. Kenny Berry, I should say. Kenny Berry, and he's all the way back out to the 14-yard line. Oh, boy, you talk about going backwards. They had a first and goal at the half-yard line. Now fourth down back at the 14. 
prior to the quarterback settling right in here his position, it looked like these people here were a little bit confused as to where they wanted to line up. There was no blocker over there. He wanted to throw a tight end sneak pattern out to the left there, couldn't get it off. There was there were some mental breakdowns before the physical breakdowns in that play. Now this is going to be a 27 yard field goal attempt by Langle. Those kick is up a little chip shot and he has gotten three of those points back here in the second half of play. 20 to 13 Perlis knows they missed an opportunity first and goal at the half yard line. They settle for three at the 248 mark. Boy, I tell you, Dick Vermeil, coaching fortunes can change, can't they? Oh, Tennessee oh. lost six in a row last year, and look then what they're doing Then they come on now. and they won five straight. Yep. And now they're going full board. Can you believe this? That last field goal, it's hard to believe, but that's the first points that Miami has given up in the second half all year long. <laughs> and this is the fourth game. I know it. They had uh, outscored opponents 55 to nothing in the second quarter and had not given up any points in the third or fourth quarter. Langlo kicking off 20 to 13 in favor of the Hurricanes. Randall Hill. It'll be at the 20 yard line is where Miami will set it up. Let's go back to that defensive stand. You can see right there he wants to throw the sneak pass to the left and here he is he gets down. He's got him sacked. I'll tell you if I were coaching right now I'd be excited about that. Tony yeah. Perry was the guy I'd that got excited. There. Yeah he is. Dennis is excited. You bet he is. That <laughs> away, Dennis. Hey, hey! <laughs> I, you, I know that feeling. Yeah, I tell you, he's had some adversity today. <laughs> Here's your starting quarterback to start with. Toretta getting off now to McGuire. Good defense. Good Good defense. McGuire Woo! and the green and white are there. Arlen Barnett was the first. McGuire out of Brooklyn, New York, giving Conley some. Uh, Resting time and now Conley will come back in and McGuire loses yardage. Bring up second down. Line of scrimmage will be the 16 yard line. The one thing you're going to know when you play a Michigan State team, as we've said all through this ball game, they're going to be tough because the coach is tough. That old green wall is what they call themselves up front. Second and 14. Picked no, off. He didn't get it. He and didn't pick it's it. It's going to be trapped by Jenkins. Carlos Jenkins. Earlier, the other linebacker, Dixon Edwards, almost had one. Already two interceptions in the ball game. One you know, by Jenkins and one by Snow. You know what Torito did on that? The quarterback, Gino, he came back looking to his right and looking to his right, and he kept looking to his right too long before he went back and threw the ball to his left, and he didn't see that linebacker there. Testaverde in '86. And a brother of Gino Jeff, who was his backup, came in with And this one deflected, looks like Willards. Craig Willards, 99, got the hand up. All of a sudden now, this game is starting to turn around. A little momentum switch. Willards, he's excited about it. We were looking at films there and movies in Thursday, and Willards was at the meeting room in uniform waiting for the meeting to start 45 minutes ahead of time. You think he was ready to play? That was Thursday. <laughs> Out of Bay City, Michigan, where his dad has been the mayor as well as a college professor. Allowed to punt the football from the two-yard line. The black, ooh! Good rush, and uh, the punter goes down, but no flag. Little contact, but incidental contact at best, and it'll be blown dead inside the 50-yard line and of Michigan Denver. State. 35 yard punt. It was Snow who was one of those guys who almost crashed into the punter. And so Michigan State and the crowd sensing something will have the football at their own 49. Charlie Bag at the quarter. Uh, the coach that signals right there in the middle. He does all the calling. George Perlis on the left. Play comes down from Morris Watts up in the booth down to Charlie Baggett on the sideline, and then they go from there. Stanford, San Jose State out west. From the 49, the 
crowd uh, perking up here a bit as now State down by seven. Movement up front and looks to me like Barrow, the middle linebacker, jumped up. Some of his inexperience, he's playing again right in place here. of Bernard Clark. They're coming with an extreme change-up defense on first down again. They're losing their poise a little bit here. Just line up and play the defense. Taking a look at that punt again, there was really no contact on the punt. And if there had been, he was blocked into it, and I think anyway, coming up over the fullback, number 30. A little acting there, I think. Yeah, you've got to be an actor if you're a punter. First and five from the 45-yard line. Right down lineman. This is Duckett. Duckett just across the 45, 43-yard line. Maurice Crum was up there to make the stop. This has been a game of attrition in some ways. Just think about it. Craig Erickson went down for Miami. Island Hickson Island has Hickson. been hurt. Yes. Uh, Greg Marks. I mean, it, as we continue to go along, uh, some key players are dropping to the Second wayside. Second down, three. Second down now, three yards to go. Mark is back in the game. He's by the back way. in the game. Yes, he is. Yeah. That knee's about four feet from his heart. Yep. <laughs> Good point. He wants to play. Second down and three. And it out, Enos in trouble from behind. He's caught up with, and that is Boy, Willie Pagis, number 58. You know what, Enos was fortunate then that he didn't get the ball stripped because he couldn't see Pagis coming from the backside, and he had the ball down there and getting in a position to, to uh, throw the ball, and he was fortunate he didn't get it stripped. You know, we knew Enos was a good passer. I think the thing that impresses me, though, is his quickness. He can run so well. He scored once and also bootleg for 16 yards on another occasion. The thing that impresses me the most, and Morris Watts, the quarterback and coordinator coach, said he has real poise. Yep. Real poise. Understanding of the game, too. Yes. Third down now, seven yards to go. Here's the bear defense. Again, that eight-man front. He knows, reads it, scrambles out of it, gets rid of it, and threw it away. Just had to get rid of it as uh, Bradley tried to double back, but there was just no chance, and so fourth down coming up. That was the bear defense. I think that's the first time we've seen it. Well, we expected to see it more. The bear defense or the 46 defense or the 80. It's called all kinds of things, but named, of course, when Buddy Ryan used it with the Chicago Bears. Well, and Buddy visiting Stanford one time, uh, visited with Sonny Lubick, who was then at, time, at that time coaching the defense at Stanford, and uh, they discussed the defense, and, and Buddy sort of gave them the, the approach to putting it in, and they've been running it. So, Butlin, let's see if they can get this snap correct. It's a little low, but it's not going to be any difficulty. Oh, nice hit it a mile high. Oh, that could bounce this way. And yeah, that's a good one. going to be inside that's the a dandy. And very quickly, Tony Brenningstuhl, number 84, downs it. So, Butlin does the job. Butlin says, just give me the ball. I'll take yeah, care no, of it. No, there's the guy that's excited. There's <laughs> the guy. That, he had a good snap. He had a good snap. 40-yard punt, and now we have another man shaking up. That's Sean Thompson. Mentioned his brother, Billy Thompson. He played at Louisville, the All-American. Played for the world champion, Lakers. One thing that uh, George Perlis wanted to do today, Dick, was have some ball control, get some time of possession going for him. And I think that's starting to happen yes, now. Sir. You can see right here. Look at this. 11 minutes to three. You should. Actually, though, Miami scored more points within that short period of time. Well, right now, uh, Thompson still down at the 50-yard line, so we'll have to wait. Hold up play momentarily. 11 seconds left in this third quarter. Miami next week will play Cincinnati. And then they will uh, go on the road later at Florida State, at Pittsburgh, Notre Dame. You know, what they'd like to do is get Bernard Clark as well as Jimmy Jones back for that Florida State game. Yeah. Sean Thompson is walking off the field right now, or limping off, being helped off, is the fourth string inside linebacker. The third string inside linebacker, Michael Barrow, number 56, started the ball game. They had That's Crum it. over there for a while. Yeah. They moved him over, so they're getting thin. <laughs> 11 seconds left in the third quarter as Miami now will have it. First down 10. This is Conley. Conley gets out to the 10 and runs into some traffic there. He'll pick up two yards. And we're going to come to the end of this third quarter. Snow and Jenkins combining on the stop. So after three, 
Miami 20, Michigan State 13. We'll return with more college football action between Miami and Michigan State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Fifteen minutes to go. The two quarterbacks, Enos for Michigan State and Toretta in relief for the injured Craig Erickson. Toretta out of Panola, California, was recruited by Dennis Erickson when he was in Washington State. I imagine Dennis is glad he escaped. Glad he didn't get it. Glad he didn't win that recruiting battle. Second down eight from the ten for Miami as we begin the fourth quarter. They're trying to get wide. The 13. That was Percy Snow. Snow has his legs are like tree trunks. He is so big, so strong, going sideline to sideline on most plays. That time chasing him down. It brings up third down and still about six yards to go. I asked him the other day, I said, if when you go in the National Football League, where would you like to play? And he looked and he thought a couple of he says, you know, I sort of like the Jets. I sort of like the Jets, he said. Well he wouldn't have to change the color of the jersey, would he? Yeah. Green and white. Third and six. Toretta inside the five. Gets rid of it to Conley, and he's got the first down on a good second effort. He had really about a yard short when the impact from Carlos Jenkins occurred, but only 170 pounds. He lunged forward and got the first down. He's a tough guy, and watching the uh, game tapes of last week, he can bounce off people, ricochet, and keep his feet going and work upfield, and then break the long run after that. On the 20 yard line, first down. 20 to 13, second rank Miami. They've got a battle here today. Play action. Pass. Pressure coming and. Oh! Level. Wow! Was he hit by Iquinella, Mike Iquinella, from well, the Dearborn, Michigan? He had dropped the ball before Mike got there, but <laughs> he probably wouldn't have. He probably wouldn't been able to hang on to the ball if he had caught it. You're going to see Iquinella come right, flashing right to the left of your screen right now. Now watch him go up. Wow! Oh. Hello, man. Iquinella, a quarterback in high school, recruited that way. Now playing the safety spot. Second and ten. Toretta. A handoff to Conley, and Conley just straps and scrapes his way across the twenty to the twenty-one. Finally, Bill Johnson, 96, out of Chicago, there to make the stop. There's the stats thus far. Still, Miami with the better of it statistically. Shows you right there that the possession isn't the most important thing. It's the score that's the most yep. important thing. Look at the penalties, though. 12 penalties for 87 yards. Yeah. Now, early in the game, it was Michigan State having problems. They had three personal fouls. Third down, nine. Travis Davis pressure coming to Toretta's backside to Chepsinski and level hit by the All-American Percy Snow. And I mean hit. This defense is a good, good football team, and we saw them a lot last year, but this is a better defensive team. They are stronger than last year. Two pretty good plays in the secondary. Stopping him short of the first down, fourth and four. To allow to punt, Courtney Hawkins is back. Big rush, and he gets it very high. Hawkins calling for the fair catch, has it at the Michigan State 42. 31 yard punt. Let's go back to the hit by Percy Snow. Here's Percy Snow. Now he's done this 340 times in his career in high school. I mean, here at College of Michigan State. So he has, you know, he has a lot of experience hitting people. Oh. Zinski <laughs> caught it. They may have wished he had it. Making the action. Michigan State has the ball. 13.09 to go. Well, Sean Thompson, number 53 for Miami, is out for the rest of the game. He's torn a ligament in his knee, and the injuries are seeming to grow. So the trainers are keeping an eye. He's wrapped up in ice, but he is through for today. Back to you, Gary. Tay is like the mash unit, the way things are going. Cheryl <laughs> sounds like a doctor down there. There's been so many reports going on. The training might, trainer might be the M MVP of this game. Ooh, he's going to have a long trip home with all those guys. From the 43-yard line now, Michigan State trailing by seven. 
13 on nine to go. Two tight ends. This is Tico Duckett and Duckett gets to the line of scrimmage and that's all. Willis Pagese is there. No question they miss the toughness of Blake Ezor in a play like that. He just throws his body in there with yeah, reckless is, abandon. As tough as you can be, I don't think you would have broke that play. You know, I mean, it was well defensed, and Pagese came down from the backside. He had no, no chance to run over Pagese. He got him from the behind blind side. Ezor would probably tell you he could have, though, knowing him. <laughs> oh, he'd tell you. He looked right in the eye and said, I'd kill that guy. <laughs> Second down, 10. Innes on the keeper as he options the far side and gets across the 45. We talked about Blake Ezor. Ezor out of the Las Vegas area. There he is. Tough guy. In fact, George Perla says he's never coached a tougher guy pound for pound. Well, he's not the biggest guy at about five foot nine, 180 pounds. But he has 2,450 yards running to his career already. So he wanted to play today. Oh my God. I don't know if he'll be ready for Iowa next week or not. He thinks he is. Third down now, seven. He knows near side. Smolensky tries to come up with it, but uh, he trapped it. And it's fourth down. So Michigan State will have to punt the football. Ryan Smolensky trying to come back to it, and Butlin will come in, and every time Butlin goes back, you, if you're a Michigan State fan, you got to be a little nervous. As Shapiro will get ready to snap it. Chow will go back for the Hurricanes. Button has done a good job of punting that football there. He's gotten it up there. Now Shapiro, he's going to rip that thing. Not too tight, young man. Oh, boy. I tell you, Button fielded it very well, didn't he? And he hit a beauty. Carroll goes back at the seventh. Down there is Dixon Edwards. Good job. Catch up with him. Boy, that was a great job. Time. Dixon Edwards did a super job of covering that punt. Shapiro goes to the near side, saying to himself, is this game ever going to end? How many more times am I going to have to snap it? That was a 47-yard punt. Seven-yard return. Oh. Well, the guy that's had the uh, difficulty today is Mark Shapiro. Now he snaps this ball, he bounces this one to Butlin, and Butlin got away a beautiful punt here. He's hustling down the field and he's getting pushed and shoved around, but and, the worst is to come. And you know what it is? Scholarship. <laughs> you know the worst to come? He's got to come over here and yeah. talk to Coach Perkins. Yeah. That's the worst part of it all. <laughs> I don't know, I'll tell you. I, you know something, uh, coaching in the National Football League, I have seen centers that have centered the ball in the league and long snapped the league for 10 years, hit a streak where they start snapping them bad and they can't get out of it. So, young man, you aren't alone in the world. Well, he, I tell you right now, though, he's kind of standing by himself <laughs> on that sideline. No one's close to it right now. Do you want to go down and snap for him that next one? <laughs> no. He's just praying that offense moves the ball. First down now for Miami. To Conley and Conley out to the 15 yard line. Chris Willard's there. I'm having a tough time now getting any field position as Michigan State has slammed the door in their face here in this fourth quarter. When your punter's doing a good job, regardless of the long snap, boy, that makes a difference. Santa is my alma mater getting after the Cardinals. You know, Dennis Erickson was an assistant coach, offensive coordinator at San Jose State at one time. The Cardinals. Look at Colorado. We thought Washington was a good football team. Second down eight. Coretta throwing and behind him it is picked up. It's intercepted. It's Barnett. Barnett to the five. Diving touchdown. Co-captains, and did he smell the goal line on that one? He just wasn't going to be kept out of there as he dived for the corner. 
Well, now, Loretta suffering the interception, and going for the tie will be Langlo. I think it's a good decision to go for the extra point right now. Heck, we've got over 10 minutes to go in the ballgame. No sense in going for that, too. 10.48 mark now. The snap, the ball's down. Langlo's kick is up, and it's all equal now at 20. So Erickson with one interception. Toretta has suffered two interceptions. As Miami turning the ball over three times via the pass. As you look again at Barnett and the interception. It was a two deep zone, Jerry, meaning two safeties back there playing half the field. He threw it right in his arms. Receiver crossed inside. Jasinski misses the tackle. He runs in. He gets it there. Barnett, fourth interception in his career. He was hurt a lot last year. He's come back strong today. It's all even at 20. The two principals involved in that last play, Barnett with the interception, Toretta with the errant pass for Michigan State. Side, Randall Hill is over there. It'll be out of bounds for the penalty of five yards. So Langlo will have to do it again. Toretta, you wonder, Dick, you've been in this situation to coach so many times. What do you say to a kid like that? I mean, he's been thrown into this situation. He's suffered two interceptions. Do you just leave him alone, or do you go over and try to encourage him? What do you do? Well, a lot depends on the personality of the quarterback. All quarterbacks' personalities are different, just like all running backs' personalities. Some guys might need a, a stiff talking to. Other guys, you maybe just leave alone. And, and other guys, you, they need encouragement pumping up. It depends many times on their own confidence level. Well, you know, you wonder if they really know this kid very well. He hasn't played that much. Well, you know, so... Dennis Erickson's new. I mean, there's a lot of new situations here. Dennis knew him was in high school, but he's a recruiter in the Washington State. I'll tell you, he did a great job of coaching at Washington State. Like I said earlier, if you can win nine games at Washington State, beat UCLA, beat University of Washington within those nine wins, you're a heck of a football coach. Best record they had had at Washington State since 1930. That's yep. before I was born. Believe it or not. <laughs> Langlo kicking up now. Hill misgates this one. Now picks it up. Sometimes those are the kind that really break. There he comes out to the 20, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. It's 20 all here. Let's go to New York now. Catch some more updates from Roger Twible. First down, Miami at the 29. Sure. No, we don't need it. It's just going. The game's tied up. Boy, that, that Houston team runs that run and shoot, and they bombed Arizona State a week ago. Toretta and Erickson, the brain trust, trying to get something going here. Get oh, the ball. He is hit the backside. I mean, hit. That's Tim Reidinger. You wait too long, and that backside pressure comes, and you're going to pay for it. And he paused too long, and... Reidinger made him pay for that one. Reidinger, his pet is a great big large snake. Believe it or not. And, and he even an iguana like too. I think he's an iguana or two. Those defensive linemen are all a little bit strange, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, you tell him that, not me. No, I don't either. Second and nine. They picked up a yard. Toretta had a little trouble with exchange there. And oh! he's unloaded. That's the guy that intercepted a moment ago, Barnett. There's a penalty here. Yeah, flag at the 30. Forward progress to the 35-yard line, but Barnett looked like he was shot out of a gun as he went running over there to make the tackle. There is a flag. Illegal man down. Lost yeah. it down. Yeah. Both these teams are playing so hard, Gary. Line play, they're We have an ineligible each other. receiver downfield by the offense. Still second down. Line of scrimmage now, the 25 yard line, five yard penalty. 
Second down now, 15 yards to go. So Toretta, who came out and really did a great job back in the second quarter after Erickson went down, really has had a tough time from about midway third quarter on. You have to give the defense some credit for that. Trips three wide outs to the top of the field. Toretta surveying things and delivers to Dawkins and he's wrapped up by Barnett. Dale Dawkins. Forward progress out to the 33 yard line. Still got quite a ways to go for first down. Third down coming up. Third down and still seven. Nine fifteen left in this one. Miami's won ten in a row going back to last year. Twenty four their last twenty five on the road. Toretto over the middle and it's Wesley Carroll and that is a first down to the forty two yard line. Carlos Jenkins over there Dixon Edwards but it's enough for the first down. Wesley Carroll just set in there, let the linebackers drop, set and delayed, 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 and then he just checked down, down inside, boom, they popped in the football. This guy has really battled back from some adversity in his family, getting his grades up at the junior college ranks and a real integral part of this Miami attack. <laughs> Alex Johnson and Matt Vanderbeek was there. Vanderbeek, a redhead, is really a, a very vocal guy, kind of a fun guy to be around. Well, I'll tell you this, Vanderbeek is playing right over here at this defensive position. He's one of those guys that empties his bucket on every snap. He plays as hard as he can play on every snap, like it's a matter of life and death. And if you want to know, Gary, what the coaches think of him, Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, said he's the kind of guy he'd love for a son-in-law. What he say is Jack Armstrong, All-American boy. Yeah. Second and 17 now after that one. Loretta. Coming to Dawkins, he's rushing for the ball, and the ball comes out of there. He and Barnett, and Barnett played that one beautifully. Actually, was behind Dawkins, reached around and got a piece of it, and it's incomplete. Barnett playing a strong football. Well, game. he's excited about playing football again. Had the leg foot injury last year, missed 10 games. So a third and 17 coming up for Dennis Erickson. A passing coach doesn't even like third and 17. <laughs> 7.59 left to go. The score, 20 all. Loretta Chudzinski can't get oh, to him. Guys. Overthrowing. Iquinella was there. Also this guy, Donaldson. Fourth down. Miami relies an awful lot on throwing those seam patterns down the field, and they aren't high percentage completion passes. They're big passes when you do co complete them, and they needed the 17 yards, so they were going down there, but I'd like to see them come with some of those crossing patterns. Hawkins back to Lyle to punt it. 7.55 to go. Big rush put on. Yes, it is. End over end. Hawkins is going to run it. And uh, at the 26 yard line is where they're going to mark the ball. Jesse Armstead, number one out of Texas, out of Dallas, is down there to make the stop. 20 all, 743 left here at Spartan Stadium. and Erickson, Craig and Dennis Hudlin. Toretto's over there. Conley is over there. Miami trying to get something to work offensively for them. Earlier today, number one ranked Notre Dame beat Purdue 40 to 7. And right now, second ranked Miami fighting for their life. They're deadlocked at 20. And of course, Notre Dame, Miami will meet later in the year. Dennis Erickson's finding out how tough it is here in Big Ten country this week. Enos. The team at the line of scrimmage. Five down seven. Very on defense. Oh, this time, boy, that's out of the game of Scott Seltzer. And Seltzer has been in that position many times today. Just no place to go. Russell Maryland made sure of that. 
Boy, did he just dominate there. Oh, he just got off on the snap. They've got five down linemen in there. When you're an offense and you have two tight ends, that tight offensive line, and you get five down linemen in there on defense, it's tough to win that battle. Well, they went for the eye that time, and uh, there was just nothing for Seltzer to read. It was just Second completely closed off for him. They lose three. Second down, 13 yards to go. Montgomery now into a high, strong right. Play action take by Enos. He's going to run it. It's out of bounds at the 30. Considerably short of the first down. He's still about eight yards short. Richard Newbell, number 38, chased him to the near side. But again, Eno shows his quickness. He does have that movement. Now there's five down linemen in there again, two tight ends for the offense. He makes the fake in there. He's coming out with that play that he scored on earlier and made the long run, hoping to get something else out of it. Got a few yards, but not the big play that he got in the past. Third down, still eight. Flanked out. Everybody else is in tight. So fair defense. Fair defense. There's right. Enos rolling again. He wants to run again. He doesn't throw that at all. And he has thrown for a loss, and it's fourth down. Kenny Berry, who's played a strong game. Remember that play he made on the goal line earlier? Came over from the cornerback spot. And so now, fourth down, virtually 10 yards to go. And Bobo will have to punt the football. And here we go. Adventure number what? Breathe deep, young man. Breathe deep. Well, we all know what it is to be nervous. Uh -huh. yeah. It's one thing to miss a putt, though, and to mishandle a snap in front of 76,000, right? Yeah. But on the old golf course, there seemed very big. Here is Butlin, and it was a good snap. Butlin hit it very high. Wesley Carroll going over there. Those are hard to cover. And he comes out across the 40 to the 43. And Ryan, he will have it there. 43 yard punt. So Shapiro, job well done, young Atta man. Boy. You're growing, young man. 13 yard return. Six minutes, 13 seconds left. Well, Monday night. Oh, I'm looking forward to this, aren't you? Bears and Eagles. And think of all the games you've played through the years and when you coached against them. It's a good thing the two coaches don't have to play against each other. Huh? <laughs> boy, boy. Buddy's great. Buddy's getting after oh, a little bit. I don't think they'll go out and eat dinner together. <laughs> Beretta back to throw. And wide open is Dawkins. Dawkins has got it out to the 35 first down. Iquinella over there. 21 yard gain on the play. Those deep, get down there. If you get the kind of time to stretch the zones and get down in those holes, they're tough to defense. You've got to get pressure on the quarterback to stop that. So Toretta kind of battling back after those two interceptions. Hooks up for a 21-yarder. Clock put back into motion. Six minutes left in the game. in motion. Toretta looks there. Now looks this way. Running around and he's going to get a couple of yards on the play as he goes out of bounds at the 33. Travis Davis giving chase. I don't know what kind of scrambler this young man is, but uh, did a good job of not throwing the poor ball. He didn't like what he saw in coverage. Line of scrimmage will be marked just outside the 32. They give him three yards. Second down and seven. Now coming into the ball game, Lamar Thomas at a flanker back spot. So they have Hill and Thomas along with Wesley Carroll split to the top of the field. They're come after him, Beretta gets it off to Carroll, and Carroll short of the first down at the 27 yard line. It'll be third down. Iquinella over there, making sure he didn't go any further. We've talked about how tough Miami has been. Second winningest record of all the teams in the country in the 80s. Now look at the losses in the last five seasons. That is a who's who, isn't it? Notre Dame, Penn State, Florida, Tennessee. Now Tulane might not come into that category, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Third down, three. Toretta and broken up. Good play on the far side. That's Benson Donaldson again. Fourth down. Good tight coverage by Benson. He wasn't backing up. Five oh nine now left as the line of scrimmage at the 27. 45 yard field goal. Yeah. Puerto will attempt it. He's five and he had a 47 yarder last 
here, so this will be two yards shorter than that, a 45 yard attempt. Corral will hold, the ball is down, Holt's his kick is up, and the kick is good. He hit it. He nailed that one. And oh, Huerta, get a bow. yes sir, his third he field goal of the day. He took his bow, did you see that? 23-20, Huerta. Sports all over. They expect him to be the all-time leading field goal kicker for the Hurricanes. He's hit one from 32, 27, and now 45 yards. And never missed a PAT in his career. Well, thinking about players that might be the player of the game reminds us that at the conclusion of the game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. And for the 19th year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. 20. Second rank Miami with the lead. This is the third time in the football game they've had the lead. 5-0-4 left in it. George Perlis now. His team down by as many as 10 in the second half. Washington State. Holy macro. Ooh, and Pullman. Woo! And San Jose State. San Jose State name. Tell you what. We mentioned about how Dennis Erickson kind of shook up the Northwest and some of the residual of all of that's still up there, isn't it? Still have to be mentally ready to play. Oh, you see, we did them last week and they're a real good football team. Here's where to kicking off. Eddie Brown will go into the end zone and that's not going to make it to the end zone. It's a five yard penalty. Had a lot of kicks going out of bounds. So Huerta will kick it again. Huerta, he's a pre-law student. His house is uh, just across the campus, the University of Miami, where he grew up. Crowd announced today of 76,217. Where to the 45 yard field goal? Five plays, 28 yards. Five yards. Where to is 5'9", 172. Went to Columbus High School in Miami, which has produced a lot of good players. Walked on, no scholarship. He's earned a scholarship. In fact, they better double it after today. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's against the law, isn't it? You can't get any more in the scholarship. 23-20. And Huerta will kick off this time to Courtney Hawkins, who's back at the bottom. And this is another strange kick. But this one's going to stay in. Hawkins up to the 25. Gets to about the 27 yard line and here comes a fly. From what I understand, he's been having trouble all year kicking off, whereas he's a fine field goal kicker. You maybe you ought to just use the same approach, huh? Gonna have to pull out a different club out of that bag, I yeah. guess. Holding against Michigan State. Well, oh, they don't need that penalty. Well, they would have had the ball at the 27 yard line. Five minutes left in this one. 23-20 the score. We have Miami with the lead. On a receiving team, first down. Michigan State now huddles back inside the 10. Let's see if we can pick it up. There's the wedge forming in front of the returner. Oh, I see that. Number 84. That's Brennan Stewart. He's a smart guy. What's he doing that for? They're going to move 3. him. 3.4 in med school. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to move him to middle linebacker. He's yeah. been playing outside linebacker. Yeah. Said he wants to see the ball. And you can for the middle linebacking spot. So he knows to start this one. From the 18. Throws incomplete. Ten to receivers, Courtney Hawkins. And there is Newbell again on the play. Had a lot of flags in this game. Look at this. Miami 14 for 97. Michigan State 8 for 75. And they came into the game with Miami came into the game with 11 penalties in three games. No, excuse me, 11 per game. So they're just a little above average. Yeah, that sounds better, doesn't it? Dan Enos will have a second and 10 from the 18 yard line. Up the field, complete James Bradley. Bradley makes a move, stays on his feet, and they get out of a big hole. <laughs> Just short of the 40-yard line, Darren Smith on the tackle. 21-yard gain. 
Bradley came down. You'll see him right here. He comes down and he works up underneath the first coverage man. They're going zone. See, he works under and they pass him off. He moves back inside there. The ball's where it had to be in that hole. Then he darn near breaks this thing. 21 yard gain, just short of the 40 yard line. Here comes the fair defense changeup. Coming after him. Eight man front. Enos picks it up. There's your coming. He's got to get rid of it. He can't. Shane Curry drops him inside the 30. The game plan was to audible out of any player in, get into either run the option, but you can see they have eight people up front and not enough, so there are eight people up here, right there, only three deep. So they're coming after him with the bear defense. The game plan, as explained to us, was to audible and get out of it and then either go to the option, remember, or just a short, quick pass. Maybe he didn't pick it up, but uh, whatever it was. It. Yep. It's going to be now second and 20. The loss all the way back inside the 30-yard line. 3.55 left in the game. He knows in the pocket. Ball was tipped and incomplete. Somebody, I think, got a hand on it at the line of scrimmage. And then Bobby Harden, the guy they call Dr. Death, was over there on the play defensively. I think it was Russell Maryland that may have gotten a hand on the ball. Brings up third down and 20. Coming in now will be Brian Smolinski, and checking out will be tight end Carlos Marino. So Michigan State needs a 20 yard play. And 20. On the 30. See their third down conversions, two of 14. 14. He's got it. Kirk oh, Hoffman fumble. fumbled the ball. It's loose. Michigan State's got it, but they're no short of the down. first down. They are short of the first down at the 45. Recovery by Dwayne Young, the tight end. Here's the Hawkins made the grab. Now here's where you make a decision. Now the decision is to you go for it on fourth down. There's three minutes and 30 seconds to go. You've got four yards to go for the first down, or they're going to go for it. I think they got to go for They've it. They've got to go for it. Yeah. Now, Hawkins had the ball further up the field when he made the catch. They lost about three yards, so it's going to be fourth down and four. And timeout. Perlis wants a timeout, and he got the attention of his troops. Yeah, good decision. So he uses his first timeout. Michigan State stops the clock. Three minutes, ten seconds left to go. We come back. Big call coming up. Fourth down and four. Dick Vermeil and Cheryl Miller were at Spartan Stadium with 3.10 left in the game, and Miami leads by three and fourth and four. Erickson had his defensive troops over on his side. Perlis had the offense, and what do you call now? Well, defensively, they've had great success at coming after him. Michigan State has not handled pressure. I'd go after him. You know, if you play it soft, you give them the four-yard game. Get after them. Bring them. Okay, go with that bare defense again. You think they've milked that little bootleg too much? Yeah, well, the last thing, you know, they ran it for two big gains, one touchdown, and then they made a four-yard gain around, but I wouldn't come with that one. So here we go. Fourth down and four. This time, three wideouts, two to the near side. Shemensky, Hopkins, and Bradley split out. They're coming after you. Yes, they are. And Enos is in trouble. He and they're going to turn the ball over on downs. Darren Smith was there first, and then Greg Mark from the backside. Good pressure coming off the corner. You have to come after him in that situation, and they did a good defensive call by Sonny Lubick. You'll see the heat coming off this side as the quarterback starts sprinting out. He's coming out now to his right. Here he comes now. See, there's the heat. Now the running back misses that block right there. Seltzer's got to make that block. Scott has to make that block. It's only a matter of life and death. It, yeah, right. <laughs> it almost looked like they were playing 12 people, didn't it? Yeah. There just weren't enough people to block who was coming at him. So now the clock with 3.03 remaining. Taking over on downs is Miami. Miami dancing around. He'll try to stay in bounds. Or the bank goes out of bounds. That term you just used was super. Dancing around. He can be at the line of scrimmage, stop, no place to go, and all of a sudden break out of the pack. So either straight ahead, bounce off, in this case, outside. Clever little runner. Right? Yes, it is. And a strong runner for a while. And week stress back. a little. He's 170 pounds. Oh, the first down run to the 31 yard line. 257 left. Now three wide outs to the top of the field. 
Loretta giving off to Conley again in that right tackle. Oh, oh. snow hit him. Yeah, he did. Oh, Percy. He is unloaded today on He unloaded people. on that one. Edwards is also there. Look at it. He really gave him a, a shot. Reidinger now comes in. Bobby Wilson checks out. Yeah, he weighs 240 something pounds. Of well, what was it? Anthony Johnson, fullback for Notre Dame, says his legs are like tree trunks. Yeah. <laughs> Disappointed George Perlis like to get the football back somehow. Second and five, clock running with 225. Hand off the way to Conley. Conley fighting for the first time. Vincent Donaldson over there wrestled him down. Now they stop the clock as it looks like he has the first down. They'll have to move the sticks or at least measure. They indicate first down. Line of scrimmage, the 21 yard line. So Miami coming in here with that 10 game winning streak, coming back from some adversity. Colorado, boy, I tell you, Bill McCartney's crew is rolling, and now USC has taken the lead. I can't believe there are many teams in the country that can beat USC. I really, I mean, and that's no disrespect for Washington State, but after seeing them last week and watching them practice, and those players, oh gosh. Well, they so far have been able to pull it out and pull it. Give to Conley running to the near side. And Conley will be dropped at the 19 yard line. Pick up of a couple of yards. Willards is over there, along with Brenning Stuhl. Well, you look at this Miami team, you wonder how long they'll be without Craig Erickson. Because in a couple of weeks, it really gets tough. They go to Florida State. They have to go to Pittsburgh. They meet Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. And Dennis Erickson has some awfully tough games ahead of him. Right now, he says, just keep that clock running. Let's just get out of here with this three-point win. Offense, take your time. Yep. Take assess all the time. The use all the clock. That's right. Assess uh, our injuries. Got to get ready next week for Cincinnati. Straight ahead handoff. So they're just going to burn off the time. Travis Davis making Michigan the stop. Michigan State have any timeouts left? Oh, yeah. They've got two left. Get, get them calling. Yeah, finally. Here we go. Yeah, they've got it called. So they stop it with a minute seven. So now the Spartans with one timeout remaining. I tell you what, you think Michigan State hasn't been thrown into a couple of tough weekends? They oh, played Notre but, Dame last week yeah. and this week Miami, and they have given both teams all they wanted. Yes, you, you see right here, getting away from what you were saying right on that last shot, Gary, George Perlis went over to his defensive coordinator, Norm Parker, and said, get after him, meaning, hey, bring everybody in, kitchen like sink and everyone else. At the north end of the field is not an exit, so please do not attempt to use the tunnel. Dead ball, personal field. foul on the offense, now third down. Dead ball, personal foul, Miami. Hmm. Thanks to our statistician, George Hill, our spotter, Bill Friel, as they now step off 15 yards. And Dennis Erickson is saying, not another penalty. Give me a break. Yeah. He's trying to figure out what it was all about there. So now it's back out to the 32-yard line. So we're going to take a break. 107 left in this one. Second-ranked Miami. They've had their hands full, but they lead by three. Dick Vermeil and Cheryl Miller at the top of this broadcast we said this would be a good barometer of how effective this Miami football team is how good they are what do you think thus far I think they're both good football team <laughs> you're looking at a Michigan State team that could have easily beaten Notre Dame last week third and 21 after the personal foul and uh, Toretto just rolling around he's going to try to eat up some time and uh, it's incomplete huh. No, that doesn't eat up any time. Well, that play takes a long time to execute, though. See, that quarterback had the ball in his hands and running out there for a long time. It takes some time. <laughs> Erickson is saying, why did you throw the ball? I mean, you stopped the clock with an incomplete pass. <laughs> See, his hair is a little bit gray, similar to yours, you know, but he has better reasons. And he says, coaching on the sideline all Saves Michigan State a timeout. They're over the line of scrimmage, I think, when he threw the ball. That's what it was. He was on top of everything else. He was across the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. Five-yard penalty. We have an illegal forward pass 
on the offense. Loss of down, fourth down. Loss of down, it is fourth down. Here he comes on a little waggle action. Now see, they were upset at him for getting all the way out bounds. I still don't see the penalty right there. And the coach is upset because he comes and stops the clock. And now they're going to attempt a field goal. This will be a 52-yard attempt by Huerta, who's three of three. With one minute left to go. Now you risk the danger of having it blocked and then have it go the other way. This ball's going to have to hurry to get there. He got it. 52 yards. Huerta. That is a career long. Miami, 26. 26-20. <laughs> you know, a lot of people might not have attempted a field goal there just because of the danger they of having to yeah. block. But Huerta didn't let that bother him. I'll tell you this, I don't think I would have, but that shows you why I'm up here and he's down there. Okay, 26-20. Let's go to Roger Twivel. So with 54 seconds left to go, Huerta four of four in the field goal department. And remember, he's just a sophomore, 52 yarder. At first, I didn't know if that ball was going to get there, but it dropped right over. He was 0 for four in his career outside the 50 yard line. And here he goes, he pops one through. So Courtney Hawkins will go back to receive the kickoff. If he's having trouble kicking off, he ought to use that same long field goal approach. Well, now one, he's kicking it off. Yeah, this is a good one. Hawkins is waiting at the six. Trying to get wide oh. and hit hard as he comes up to about the 25 yard line. One second and off that So Ball now Michigan down. State has one timeout left. 49 seconds left in the game. Down by six. And the line of scrimmage, the 24 yard line. The other day in the practice field when they were working their two minute offensive drill, Gary, they had three wide receivers in it. Enos will bring Duckett into the huddle with him. Seltzer will check out. Line of scrimmage, the 25. Michigan State dropped to one and two, losing two games to the number one and two ranked teams in the country. They can't pull it out here. They haven't lost it yet. Enos you know, will screen Duckett, and he makes a diving catch, but he's down right there. So they lose yardage. They lose three yards. The clock running with 37 seconds. And uh, they should have let the ball fall and yeah. stop the clock. That's what they should have done. Now they got 30 seconds. Should have let that go incomplete. Enos back to throw. And he's hit him behind the ball. is fumbled. And at the 20-yard line, Miami's recovered. Greg Mark stripped the ball away. There he is, Mark, who came back from what looked like might be a game-ending injury. And Perlis is disappointed. Cortez Kennedy, I think, was recovered. Yeah. I'll tell you, this is a disappointing loss, but it, you know that Michigan State has played the best. They played the great running team in Notre Dame. They played the real fine passing team of Miami. That should really help them go into the Big Ten. You know, the interesting point about all this, Michigan State one and two, but they still could move up in the rankings sure. because of the teams sure they play. Because I of mean, the that's the kind of competition they play. So George Perlis told us this week, what was it? You can lose a game, but you can't lose your team. And he will not lose his team. Oh, they never. are too tough for that. Yeah, and they're too much of a family. Look at this. Great yeah. shot. Yeah, great shot. And so the remaining seconds tick away, and that gives us time to announce the Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of the Game. Carlos Huerta for Miami, four field goals, a career-long 52. Percy Snow for Michigan State, eight tackles, one interception of the game. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. 2620 Miami defeats Michigan State. For Cheryl Miller and Dick Vermeil, this is Gary Bender. So long, everybody. This week on ABC's Monday Night Football, quarterback Randall Cunningham and the Philadelphia Eagles travel to Chicago to take on the Bears. The action comes your way live at 9 o'clock Eastern Monday night.
And next Saturday, ABC's College Football will present regional coverage of the Big Ten and Pac-10, beginning live at 3.30 Eastern. Check your local listings for the game in your area.